Hi y'all. What? Hello. I'll tell you later. It's a Yeah. This is my stream. It's a throwdown. Everybody gets in and starts fighting. <laughs> hey man, if you got rage, back it out sometimes. It's okay. It's okay. Oh. Oh, yes, he drew on it too. Do you know what? Yeah. Alright. Oh, my jar hasn't loaded. Oh, that always looks terrible. Come on. Jar. Load. Go. 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 There you go. Okay. Hello, Ryan. Sniggle. Cactus. Yushin. Galvasaur. <laughs> <laughs> Snoggy, Das, Glitter, Bodie. Hi guys. Lightchers. Uh, if you guys want to hang out for a minute, I'm going to be telling Lychee some shipping stuff. So if you guys ever want to ship some art, I'm going to give you a quick little how-to on that. It Lychee. It's true. Also, I think I might just draw Eliza's fairy anyway, so I know she's not here yet. Maybe! I don't know. Maybe she'll be here. Who knows? Serenity's here. Hello, Serenity. Okay. Uh, Gabe's eating, so you're gonna hear some munching. Sorry. Not sorry. Potentially. How's everybody's Thursday? So good. Oh, snoggers. Snoggers. Okay. So, um, real quick. When the fairy would show up. I know. I keep waiting for her to be here and then she'll show up and I'll already be like knee deep in something else and it's not like I can switch gears really if people have been watching. So, uh, I haven't forgotten. I just wanted to wait for her. Okay, so I'm going to show you really quick if you guys ever send any art um, that's 9 by 12 or under. If you ship something that's above 9 by 12, use a tube because uh, it's just too big at that point and unless it's in like a big box that's got packing peanuts on the top and the bottom and like something rigid in the middle, like if it's framed or something like that, then you're going to want to ship it in an actual box. But for anything that's 9x12 or smaller, that's just the paper, um, I'm going to show you what I get because I'm kind of paranoid about uh, things being water damaged and stuff because there's snow here usually. So um, it's called... I'll even give you a link. Which is stupid because you can't... Office day. What the hell? I'm having the most off day I have had in so long. I've been screwing up on so many things that I'm just normally fine at. It's really, really stupid. Um, mailer. Don't give me a pop up right now. Go away. Okay. So usually the ones that are like water resistant have a little umbrella on them. It's kind of cute. Um, but, okay, so if any of you have a Office Depot or an Office Max, whatever's near you, they're the same thing now. Um, they have gray ones and they have these other ones. I'm still looking. It's weird because you can't really order these online. You kind of have to go into the store for them. Um, here we go, Polyphoto Mailer. So I usually use these. They're not exactly the most cost effective, but if you're not shipping stuff very often, this should be fine. But if you do end up shipping them really often, you can get really cheap versions of these through uh, Uline. Um, but they have different sizes for this. But like I said, I wouldn't go to 11 by 14 just because I'd be too scared that that would get bent because they've got two corrugated cardboard inserts that go on top and bottom of your piece. And then I would even put in another one that's in there if you can get like chipboard or like a comic board and put it in your 
in your piece in the sleeve, then also put it in some kind of plastic sleeve if possible. So you've got technically two layers of like water protection and you've got a bunch of rigidness. Um, but yeah, otherwise if you go higher than that, either use a tube or ship it in a box that's like this thick. Okay, like four inches thick. Yes, Nitra, yes. So like I said, you can't really, I mean, you can order them online, but really if you've got one next to you, just go there and clean it out. Like usually if I'm next to an Office Depot, for whatever reason, I'll just pop in and be like, all right, I'm just taking these now because I need them later. However, I did end up getting a Uline box uh, that has, what was it, 100 of them? Something like that. If you end up doing a lot of shipping, make sure to switch over to doing it more smartly, you know? <laughs> Um, hey, Nitro! Freelance stuff before bed. Good job, Yusha. Good job. Hi, Artemis! Dying of boredom. Oh no! Well, hopefully this will help, maybe. Mukbang, yes. Except you don't get to watch Gabe and eat. <laughs> Best Thursday of your life, Bodhi! Explain. Okay, so also, um, for those of you who know Jonas, Jonas Goonface, um, I had sent out for one of his patches recently because he had made a patch after he moved out of Von House that I thought was so fucking dope. First of all, he gave this cute little devil demon self portrait. To protect the package. To protect it with uh, demonology. So I don't actually want to cut that because it's really cute. So I'm going to maintain it. So I'm going to cut the top. I'm going to show you guys these patches. If you follow Jonas already, you've probably already seen these. You can get these on his store envy. Um, oh, he cuts up like, oh, this is great. Uh, first of all, he, he gave me this. Minnesota says hi because I'm from Minnesota and he spelled Minnesota wrong so that's cute but apparently he rips up a lot of uh <laughs> what is it? it's like a political like thing and he drew on her like it's pretty great so he said that with it um so that's great but I fell in love with this patch because this is very much Cass you'll probably dig this too um because I I feel akin to this So good. So good. I mean, this is a great way to reuse junk mail. Yeah, right. You guys, junk mail. Reuse it by, like, poor Diane Randall, executive secretary. <laughs> Apparently is a pimp, so. I don't know if that means we have to vote for her. I don't know what that means. Yeah, isn't this great? I love it so much. I'm going to put on something cool. So I got one for Gabe, too. Um. Surprise, I got one. You didn't know that. Whoa! No. I was gonna buy one of these too, but I didn't. Yeah, so we're warriors, I guess. But I just love this so much. So much, because you never stop fighting. And for those that know me, you know me. <laughs> I know, I love his patches, right? They're so good. Yeah, Cass and I are very much the same. I, I like to think of us like if we're Pokemon. I'm like her third evolution. I don't know who her second evolution is, unless she's the second evolution and there's a smaller cast somewhere. Cass, if one of your sisters is like you, we could use that. Unless there's, oh no, my grandma can be the third evolution. <laughs> it can, God smack grandma can be third evolution. I'll be second, so I'll be Ivysaur technically. <laughs> I could be, but I'm not old enough for the final stage yet. We could go either way. I do like that I would be a final stage, but I'm not 84 or whatever, so. Okay, um, so I wanted to do this for Eliza, but I still feel guilty. I feel like I should wait for her. Uh, uh, Gabe, do you mind going on Jonas's Society6 and putting a link to that patch so he can get some revenue? Except so for he's not. Huh? He's not taking orders, I don't think. I think he is. They just said they won't be shipped oh. until he gets back. So. Is it Society 6? No. Did I say that? I no. meant uh, Store Envy. Mm. Sorry. Never use Society 6. <laughs> so, uh, Loche, actually, it's kind of funny. She had put up a 
should I use Society6 or Redbubble for my stuff? And I actually messaged her. I'm like, don't use either of those. <laughs> they're bad. They're shady. They're going to steal money from everybody. Don't do it. Especially her. Yeah, especially her. She should be doing something else. She's too big for those. Um, anyway. Uh, let's see. If you're going to feed any kid, feed this kid. Feed that kid. He's good. Um, Alright, so I was going to some stuff today. Real quick, I'll show you. Last night I got two pencils done for two commissions. One is this cat, who she's a regal cat. Um, she's a fighter though, so she had to be a battle queen. And that's on a 9 by 12 And then I also did, it's funny, I got two battle royalties in a row. And then this guy, He's very demanding with his food, so I've got him pointing with a sword to his empty food bowl. So he's got a Napoleon complex. He's a dachshund, so that's why all his proportions are very midgety. <laughs> I know that's not the right word, but <laughs> well, um, I was going to work on Journey June here, but I don't know. My feelings are weird today. I told you it's a weird day. Um, tell you what, if Eliza does come in, will do her fairy. I haven't forgotten, I just feel bad. It's like, do I do it to get it done while she's here, or... I mean, it's not like it's a commission, she just kind of want to bet sort of thing. <laughs> yes, feed Jonas. He needs it. Even though he enjoys dumpster diving quite a bit. Um, Alright, so what do we got here? Um, it's been a while since I've this stuff and remember how I told you that's a big no-no <laughs> so already it's what been it's been over a month since journey June so already at this point stuff is in my head is starting to fade and if any of you finished your journey Junes make sure to start going back to them okay because two months is usually kind of the cutoff for it um, so I don't want to get to the point where I'm forgetting everything, so I'm not gonna... Alright, so what I'm gonna do is... I was planning on doing this on watercolor, and I think I'm gonna do... I know this sounds crazy and you're gonna disagree with me on this, but I think I'm gonna do every panel this size. Um, and then obviously shrink them for the book. But that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know me, I just, I want it to be good. And if I'm going to hand pencil it, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, what is Journey June anyway? Well, Journey June, let me give you an explanation there. Journey June, as well as the sites I'm going to put here. If you've ever heard of the Hero's Journey, um, Journey June is based off of that. So we took the Hero's Journey formula, which is the most popular historic, most well-known, done formula for any story that's ever been done ever. <laughs> Basically in any religion, in any movie that you've ever seen, in any book that's really popular, it's basically the hero's journey. Um, so we took the hero's journey formula, extrapolated it, added some stuff uh, to fit the 30-day June month, obviously. Um, and we did that because a lot of artists will say, I have so many stories. And when we're like, okay, what are they? They have nothing to show for it. So this was kind of um, us getting fed up with that, but at the same time wanting to help people. So it was out of frustration, but also out of love. <laughs> so we wanted to create something where Gabe and I have made lots of stories and we've brought them to fruition. So we know how it feels to actually go through the arc of a story from start to finish, how to actually like manage yourself even during a story, right? Because it's not just writing the story that's hard, it's managing how you feel about the story too, and a lot of people haven't felt that. So we wanted to kind of press this on people, at least that wanted to, and um, so every day you get a prompt that was the next part in the story, so every day each one of your illustrations would lead into the next. Obviously it created a narrative at the end. Um, we did give people like 
a week or two before June started to create their hero because ideally you want your hero to be new and you want them to already be so somewhat established. You want to kind of know who they are before the story starts because you're just going to throw them into this situation. So next year I think people will be a little more prepared. I'm just surprised how many people we got at all because we ended up having 2,000 posts, something like that, and 36 people actually finished their months. So I was blown away by that. I actually thought we'd maybe have like five, 30 something. That's insane. So all those artists now have a story they've written. That's crazy, right? So at the end of June, and the whole thing was that every illustration does not have to be polished. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't even have to be like this. In fact, at the end, <laughs> my sketches ended up looking like, let me, let me show you the degradation real quick. Here you go. <laughs> so they start off, this was the first day one, all right? And then by the end, it ended up looking like this. Even this. That's okay, as long as you know what was going on in the story, that's all that matters. Because what we ideally wanted people to do is after the month ended, we wanted you to be able to go back and polish it. And for the people that finished it, we gave them a free publishing class so they know what the next step would be and how to do it to make it into a zine, a digital book, a published book, all by themselves. And then the next step even after that is once you've actually gotten your book, which that one's the stretch. That one we know not many people will probably end up doing. Um, but we're going to have a hub for Journey June stories that have been actually made, whether they're digital or a zine or a published book, um, that people can buy them. And we want to help pimp your stuff, so if you ever finish your story, actually print it, whatever, make it digital, we'll put it on this Journey June hub where you can see everyone who's actually made a story from Journey June. So it's, it's a really good thing, I think, especially for artists, and to loosen up a good amount, too, because the thing that was the hardest for people, because I stayed glued to this the entire month, and I was looking through everyone's stuff, I looked through every story, um, next year I probably won't be able to do that, but this year I really wanted to see where we were failing, right? Um, but in doing that, I found out that a lot of people were actually still struggling with posting unpolished things and I had to explain many times that Instagram is a living medium right it's a living platform where you put up things that are not finalized that are work in progress sketches all these sort of things Instagram is your chance to make yourself seem more human as an artist whereas if you use it as like a portfolio it's gonna be very dead there's not gonna be anyone really looking at your stuff because you're never getting in front of people's eyes unless you post like this piece that you finalized every other week or something that doesn't help you that's not what instagram's for that's a portfolio that's a legit website right you're catering a portfolio do that somewhere else instagram is not for that instagram is where you send things to eventually die right they get buried literally so with that in mind, hopefully you're creating things that just show people, hey, I'm still creating. That's all it's for, right? Um, so for a lot of people, they wouldn't be happy posting this. But really, that's not the point. The point is you're making a story, and if somebody else is like, ew, this sucks, blah, 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 jokes on them. They're not doing shit, all right? So this is really to prove to people that you are active, you are doing things. And you should be very proud of that. And as someone who used to hire people, which I did, um, I would hire people. And um, the things I would look for when I looked at portfolios in their social media was, were they using their social media to show people that they were still relevant, that they were still creating? Because if you weren't creating anything, what are, you, what are you doing? You know, we don't know for sure if you're making stuff. At least if you're working on a bigger piece, do posts of progress with that. Because that's also something that you can prove to people that, hey, this is in progress. I'm working on this right now. How are you guys doing? See, a lot of people don't understand that in this day and age, you really have to, like, have a community that you're actually, like, active in. 
you know? And that's, that's kind of a newer thing with how, um, you know, it, the social media has, has made stuff. Oh, cool. These turned out nice. So I got a sticker sheet of my owls. They're not bad. The text is a little blurry, but the text is irrelevant. That turned out nice. I wish they were closer together, but that's not bad. Um, so anyway, does that answer your question, Guava? <laughs> Do you want to pop them open? No, it's okay. They're really warm. I wonder if that warmth actually made them move around on the sheet. Mm. Um, For sale soon. Fluffy Bee is the best. Hey, kitchen. Thank you. Journey June is also known as the ass kicking of the year. It's not easy. And especially for artists that really pride themselves on quality, it's really hard for them. And honestly, I think they need it. <laughs> I think anyone who's too obsessed with perfection and creating masterpiece after masterpiece, you're missing the point. That's not really what art's about. Um, so hopefully the people that at least want to like make their own stories, make their own graphic novels and stuff, start small. Even Journey June is a bit too big for someone just starting, and I'll admit that. Like hopefully, hopefully, if you start it, you've already done something small, smaller, you know? At least in your head, if thought beginning to end about a story, right? Um, but I had a lot of people that dropped off. And the weird thing was they did it publicly. That's what I couldn't figure out. They were like publicly apologetic, which made them look horrible, which you should not do. Um, don't publicly say, I am failing, you know, on purpose. I don't have time for this. Like, don't do that. Um, and they just couldn't cut it. Or some of them were even like, yeah, I actually found out I don't like doing stories. It's like, good. That's good! Then you're not going around saying to people, I'm a storyteller, and you're not, you know? That's part of finding out what kind of artist you are, and good or bad, it doesn't matter, you're at least figuring it out. And that's whittling it down so you can spend your time on the thing you're actually good at and you like doing. Um, a lot of people don't really want to face that fear. And I'm overly honest a lot of the time to the point of, you know, being almost a dick, but would you rather have that? I don't know. I would. Oh, Nitro, you're excited to join next year. Cool. Well, tr here's the trick, though. Don't try to prepare for it until May. Because the other thing is, if you prepare too much and you almost write the story beforehand, that's bad. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't have a story already. All right, don't have a character already. Try to make a character that's kind of like a crash test dummy for it specifically. Because if you get too attached to a character or too attached to their story and you're not really flexible, that's a problem. With storytelling, you have to make a character and kind of put them on the board. It's almost like The Sims and see what they do. And once you've given them kind of like a guideline to walk, their personality will start coming out and tell you where the story needs to go. And eventually, like probably three-fourths of the way through the story, you'll know what's good and bad for the story. It'll be like, no, we can't do that. That doesn't, that won't fit what they're into. That doesn't fit them at all. Like, you'll know them like a friend. So it's, it's really good. And if you want to prepare for Journey June next year, I would say almost do a practice story, but don't use any of that for next year. Just do a practice one. Because if you go to the Journey June Instagram, um, everything's there that you need. The whole month, all the prompts are there. So if you want to, at any time, like if you want September, October, November, December to be your journey June, go for it. There's no rules to that, go for it. Oh, Cactus, no, don't, uh, don't let that scare you. <laughs> if that's a, that's a bad superstition you're starting, I would be very weary of that. Um, just because you're basically saying, if I post a work in progress, it turns out like crap. No. No, don't let that stop you, because really you should be doing that. Um, no, Sniggle, that's fine. So next year, uh, for the Journey June tag, I'm going to probably make sure that people are posting it Journey through June 2019. Something like that. And if you don't use the right hashtag, which a lot of people were using the wrong hashtag, and I don't even know how that spreads, and I gave like a PSA three or four times, it's like, hey, 
you have to use the official tag as well as your own because it's not gonna work otherwise, right? So anyway, um, that's good, Serenity. Absolutely, it's always good to have an actual verbal written version of the story as well as having the pict pictorial version because sometimes you don't even know what you draw. I'm one of those guys. I don't know sometimes. Are we changing the prompts for next year? Um, probably not. At least if we do change them, it'll be minuscule. I think there were a couple we wanted to flip just where they were in the story because um, what I was trying to do was balance a couple of like introducing a new character, having an attack happen, having you know them selling stuff or something like emotional happening. I was trying to balance those, which is what you want to do for a story. So technically I'm balancing everyone's story and trying to do that in a way where they can still get a lot of variety. And remember, just because it's based on the hero's journey doesn't mean anything about the genre. That's another thing. A lot of people felt kind of uh, pressured to do a fantasy story. No, no. You can do sci-fi, fantasy, you can do western, you could do like in a grocery store was the one I kept going back to. If you want to do whatever, it's fine. Whatever you feel compelled to do, all right? Lots of freedom with this. I know it sounds like there's not, but there absolutely is. Tons. More than other illustrative challenges. So, uh, James Gurney June. Oh, no. <laughs> Can I still include myself in the JJ Hub Bonanza if I finish it before next June? Yeah. I don't see why not. Go for it. If you want to be part of the tag and you're actually actively doing it, I don't see why not. There were people that did an offshoot that called it Journey June and July, and they did it. I don't know if they finished it, actually. Do you know if they finished it? Yeah, they stopped tagging us a while ago. So yeah, they did stop tagging us, so that's not usually a good sign. But if you want to still use Journey June, I say go for it. I don't have a problem with it at all. Oh. Well, Nitro, that actually might be a bad thing. If you're used to really complex stories, and you try to write a simple one when you're used to complex, it gets hard. Simplicity is usually harder than complexity, because complexity, you usually have all this room to move, you've got all these different things you can work with, um, but when you try to actually do something simple, it's, it's a lot harder. Like, if you've ever tried to write a kid's book that's just like sentence and a picture and a sentence and a picture and make a story out of that, it can sometimes, sometimes, be harder than writing an actual story story. Depends, though. They both have their pros and cons, obviously. Don't start your first story having, like, a Sue Coden cast of, like, 150 characters. <laughs> do not do that. And it's not impressive when you're talking to somebody and you're in, like, Oh, I've got a giant graphic novel that's got all these characters in it and blah, blah, blah. That's not impressive. Have you done anything with it? Oh, I did a couple character sketches and a couple backgrounds. Okay, that's it. How long have you had it? Ten years. Nope. Throw it up. Throw it up. Or shelve it until you've written enough stories. We, we kind of akin this to um, when you get a like a rare piece of gear in a game and it's like level 50 and you're level 7 you can't wear it yet you have to like get to the point you can wear it and earn it right if that's a big and this goes for illustrations too if you have this like ideal thing you want to do shelve it because you're not there yet you have to work for it you have to earn it if you really want to give it that justification it deserves you have to get the experience you know go through all the steps walk the walk and then once you get there and you're like, I'm ready for it. I did that recently with something. I've had a story for about five years. Way back when, I'm like, I am not even at the point I could do this justice. So I shelve it. Later on, when you get to the point, you're like, yeah, I could do this now. You can unshelve it, look at it again, and be like, is this still me? Is this still something I want to do? And if it is, do it. If you still have love for it, you know, set it free if it comes back, it's yours, whatever. That whole thing. But yeah. Oh, you should. Well, you know what? Finishing it is the key. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can always go back to it. Just fucking finish it. Alright? I'm serious. If you guys are doing anything right now and it's been taking you a while, 
finish it. I don't care if the ending is completely wrong, right? Like, take an hour, write the rest of the ending. If it's wrong, that's okay. At least you finish it, you can readdress it at a later time, all right? Because it's going to be really weird. If you wait too long to finish something, you're going to outgrow it, you're going to tack on that ending, and it's going to be really out of place, more so than if you had finished it when you were doing it. Yeah, and I swear to God, for any of you who are starting, and Nitro is talking to you about this, starting stories, starting new mediums, starting anything, the key is if you're starting it, start small, okay? Start small, pump it out, fail faster, okay? Because you're going to learn so much, so much quicker, and you're not going to waste money, you're not going to waste time. If you spend two weeks painting something that's like three feet by three feet, and you can't even sell it because it looks like crap, what was that, you know? That was one painting, where in that time you could have made 10 paintings and leveled up way faster. You could have used a blue palette, you could have used like uh, a Vasquez palette, you could have used all these different kinds of things in that time and learned all that stuff within that time of that one painting. You see what I mean? Um, so it's better to do that. Soggy, you know it happens sometimes, come on. Hi, Wade. Yes, so would you suggest to create new characters for next year? Yes. No, never use old ones. Serenity, yeah, no. No, I would definitely say if you like your story from this year, continue it on your own, but next year make a new story, okay? Completely new characters. Because the whole point is that you're getting all these different ideas out there. You want to make sure you're not that one idea man, right? If you're a storyteller, you're going to have to pump out ideas all the time. I would do something almost completely unrelated to what you did this year. Alright, you've got that one started, it's going now, like think of it like you create something and it's a fire, you started a little fire, so you, you feed it over time or else it'll piddle out, right? Depending on how much you love that thing, you're going to feed it or you won't. And then over time it'll either die or it'll flourish. The next year you start a new one, alright? You got to do that. Especially if you want to be a storyteller. Tell me how to use Oh, sorry, Sagia. I can't do that. You shouldn't then throw something crazy in. You know? So here's, here's what I don't understand. Is that when you get to a point in your story where you're like, Nah, I don't really like it anymore. If you don't like anything about it, trash it. It's okay. Trash it. What do you do with a sketch when you don't like it? Forget about it, shelve it, whatever, put it aside. It's not for you anymore. If you're not into it, that's okay. Or if you learned you don't want to tell a story, don't tell a story anymore. You might not be a storyteller. And if you, that's fine. That's just another, you know, reason to go look at something else. Try something else. Maybe you're a sculptor and you don't even know it. That sort of thing. Um... So I still really like my story of Hazel, and I still want to do it, um, and I'm saying all these really cute, passionate things while I'm looking at my commission board that's this giant looming thing. Um, so I do want to do this, and I'm probably going to do it actually in this style. Um, I know these are my concepts, but honestly, this really fits it. It's going to just be brown pencil, and it's going to be watercolor. That's it. I really liked it, all the little mock-ups I was doing of it. This is almost too much. I almost just want to do flats and then do digital shadows. So I think I might just do that. Um, so anyway, anyway, personal coach. I technically am Nitro. I've been doing this now for over a year and a half, and um, I do mentorships. For anybody who hasn't seen my mentorship thing, wow. Well, Here's my mentorships. Um, they're probably going to go up in price soon just because I don't have time for them anymore. The Twitch one especially. Actually, out of all these, the gauntlet is even easier. Starting Twitch is the most time-consuming for me because I actually go on a call with you, lead you through a program, tell you how to do stuff, potentially even make your graphics for you if you pay a little extra. I'll make your overlay. Um, but... They're, they're very time-consuming, and for the next couple months, I'm kind of booked up. 
So, but these are each their own thing. The flat fee ones, um, excluding Twitch, I might have to change that, but the conventions one and the commissions one are basically documents that tell you how to do stuff. Um, the convention one has a branding workshop in it for if, uh, if you're like me and you have a terrible name that would not be good for selling art and you need to make a new one like Cloverkin, it tells you how to make your own art brand name, that sort of thing. Um, the products one that's right here, that one is based on like uh, self book publishing, how to do a digital book, how to do a zine, how to do um, a actual like perfect bound book. Um, also as well as prints, pins, stickers, all that kind of stuff. Products, you know? But ideally, I won't let you start this, actually, unless you make a compelling argument that you want to sell it online, or if you already did the convention workshop. Because, I mean, it doesn't make sense otherwise. So, anyway, those are possibilities. But, I have kind of become a bit of a art life coach, I guess. I'm tough love, I'm no bullshit. Um, Gabe's the same way. We don't like wasting people's time. We don't like people wasting our time. So it fits pretty well. <laughs> um, all right. Yes, Gabe's going to use the blender for a minute. So I'm going to mute it real quick. more of a world builder than a storyteller coming up with setting its own history so Gordon Ramsay of art I'll take that <laughs> um, so you shouldn't if you're that type of person that likes just a smidge of story but you don't want to do too much and maybe it's to accompany you know like a print or something you can totally do that some art books are art books that don't have a final project that they're associated with they're kind of like a proof of concept so if you wanted to, you could make an art book that's just a whole bunch of little worlds and things and like a little snippet of something's life somewhere and just do a little paragraph about it. And that's it. There's no rule that says you have to make an entire series off this. Nothing. No. So example, Gabe, you guys know Gabe, he made this book, all right? This book is literally a different story every page for how many pages? 200? 100 or 200? 210, 210 stories. You can open to any page in the book, all right? And this is its own story. New story on this page. New story on this page. The whole thing is that they're all set in the same universe, technically, but. They don't even need to, really. They don't even need to. I but just say that it's on Jupiter. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I'm very impressed with it. And he made it a long time ago, but it holds up. He was in a dark place. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell by some of these. But really, like, you could just do an art book like this. Like, technically, this is a novel, I'm going to say. This is more of a novel than an art book. But you could make an art book that's, like, you know, 8 by 11, really big, so it's a nice big illustration, nice big painting, and then on the side, just put a little blurb about it. Uh, you, you know? Like if you think of like Magic the Gathering cards where they just have flavor text? Yeah, flavor text. That's a good way yeah. of putting that. Absolutely. Yeah. So really, you can do whatever you want. As an artist, it's your job to do what you want. That's a really good quote. I like that. What? As an artist, yeah. it's your job to do what you want. <laughs> because everybody else is doing everything else. Do what you gotta do. Hey, Paladin! Oh, Eliza's here! Liza, I'm gonna do your fairy right now. I've got this out for you. I've been waiting for you. Hopefully that's not creepy. Mm -hmm. um, how much money do you need to get a book printed? Is it possible without a Kickstarter? Yes! Um, that's actually what our product mentorship is basically about. So all these things, I'll show you real quick. Um, this book of mine, right? This book right here, it's perfect bound. That's what a perfect bound looks like. It's one of those ones that's glued at the edge. See that? This book, self-published. 
you can self-publish it all your own, right? This is the most expensive, I'd say, of being able to self-publish. So for a hundred of these, it was probably 200 bucks, okay? So they come down to like, how much is that a book? Like, well, roughly it's anywhere between six to $10 a book. To make? Yeah, and then you're selling it Depending for Depending on how, how like, how good your paper is, how many pages you have. Okay, this is only like 50 pages, yeah. something like that. So the whole thing is that usually you get them made for that much, but then you sell them for like 15 to 30 bucks, depending on how many pages and the quality, right? So you can do that on your own. Um, also, another thing is saddle stitched, all right? This one's gotten kind of beat up, but this is where you actually staple it, right? And technically, I got the book printed from one company and the cover printed from another so I could do this gold on it, all right? This one, I technically hafted myself. Then I've got my coloring book, which is getting really banged up, this one is. But, um, oh, that's because I ripped off the back. Okay, well, that's why it's banged up. <laughs> the back's been ripped off. Okay, so anyway, this one, I really wanted a certain type of paper for people to be able to color, right? It's a coloring book, but I wanted it to be for like markers and watercolor and stuff. So I went out and picked the paper I liked. It's also an off-white, which looks really good at my booth. Um, but the whole reason I did that is so that I could have folk control of the book. So I print this, we cut this, we bend it, we staple it all ourselves. So nothing is stopping you from making a book. Hell, you can even make digital books, okay? You can make a digital book in a day. I'm not even kidding. It's so easy to do. It's just a PDF, that's all. And you can sell that on your Etsy. You can also hand bind books if you're into that. I actually took apart a sketchbook that I like the paper of, but I didn't want it as big as it was. I cut it down and I actually bound it myself. That's a little bit more intricate. Um, I also have four other books that I've done that have all been self-published. I've never done a Kickstarter. Gabe has. So Jupiter, the one I showed you with the cloth cover, the embossing, the gold, all that stuff, he made like 13k in a Kickstarter. So that's where that is. I probably will never do a Kickstarter. I don't want to. I just don't. It doesn't really fit me. So um, regardless, I use printy for my books and for those of the people that either want the product mentorship or had finished Journey June, you got a walkthrough of how to do a digital book, how to do a zine, and how to do a perfect bound book. We told you everything you needed to know to actually make one. And it's not as hard as you think. That's that's the thing. People get so hung up about, oh my god, it's a book. It's such a big deal. No, it's not. I hand bind and print one of my books completely. Two of them. The coloring book and Symbols of Symbols that maybe some of you have seen on my um, Etsy. If you go there and look at Symbols of Symbols, I wanted the cover to be a certain way. I wanted to hand stamp it. I wanted like the inside to look a certain way. I want it to be a certain size. The nice thing about being able to self-make a book is you get full control. That's also the con to it. So you have to be willing to sink a lot of time into it. But people usually appreciate that you put in that effort. Um, but yeah, it's not as hard as you think. So, oh, Snigel Paladin's attacking you. It's true. Um, so Guava, I would say if you're planning on a book, um, maybe just do use that site, do a small print run that's actually 25 to 50 books, okay? Real small run, even smaller if you if you want, but the smaller you go, the more expensive the books get, which is weird. Think about it ordering in bulk, right? Um, usually Gabe and I, at our level, we're only ordering 50 to 100 books at a time. It's not very much. It takes us a couple cons to go through them. Um, online, you'd be surprised. Uh, Etsy and stuff doesn't sell like as fast as you think it would. Um, we're not at the level where if we announce that something is now released that they don't just fly off, you know? We're not there yet. We're still at the level where it'll kind of trickle in. Some people see it, that sort of thing. It's not a big deal yet for us. Um, people with like 100,000 followers and stuff though, they have to be prepared for a big order rush when they announce something. Um, 
But if you're just starting, do small print runs. It's totally not even a thing. It's easier than you think. A lot of things with art are going to be easier than you think. But if you do plan on that, I'd say save up 100, 200 bucks and you'll be good, good to go. So maybe save like 25 bucks out of every, you know, uh, paycheck you get for like a couple months and you'll be set. It's not that bad. All right. Um, Eliza, what's your favorite flower? Time you do that, I picture you like behind a table or something and peeping out. I'm like, oh, Mage is here. <laughs> Mage is here. bit of an ugly fae. Hope that's okay. I feel like drawing something ugly. Remember guys, not everything you draw should be pretty. Really shouldn't. Marigolds are stargazer flowers. Ooh, what's a stargazer flower? Oh, they're like a lily. Oh, cute. Stargazer fish? Ooh. I think it'd be cute if, as a fairy, maybe he had... I don't like typical fairies, so normally I'll try to put a spin on it. My personal fairies, I like to have bird wings, almost like, you know, just little wild bird rings. Uh, wings, but maybe for this guy, maybe he's the type of fae that has a flower on his back instead of wings, and he can just bend over and then he's just camouflaged, you know? So let's put that on his back. So he's going to have a marigold on his back. So when you're doing a study, remember that you can do an illustration that is your study. You don't have to do a whole bunch of whatever in a sketchbook. You can actually make an illustration you're doing into a study. I don't think I've ever drawn a marigold before, so I'm incorporating a study into an illustration as I'm going. Because remember that all your art can just be, not necessarily throwaway, but it's okay that it's not perfect. It's not supposed to be, you know? You're learning with every piece you do, even one you'd consider a masterpiece, you're still learning. So as I'm studying and looking at a reference, I'm looking at what makes it that thing. Okay, look at the parts of that flower that make it different than other flowers. I think that's how to appropriately study something. And to log it in your brain, you know, what makes it that, that thing. So I think it'd be really cute if he was the type to be able to uh, just bend over and then he's just part of a flower bed. Maybe that's how he sleeps and that's why it's called a flower bed. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> and 
this is how ideas are done, you guys. Like, that could be an entire idea for a story. I just came up with that. You just watched me entirely make something. Like, once you get in the habit of making original content all the time, it's second nature. You are always thinking of ideas. And this is why Gabe and I can just do original art and pieces like that, because we've been doing it so much. And it's an, it's an absolute muscle. You know, you have to work it out, and that's why fan art can hurt you. So make sure you're usually doing original content at least 80% of the time. If you're serious about becoming an artist that's like, you know, able to sell their own stuff, um, you maybe make stories, uh, or just even a good solid illustration has a whole world usually behind it that's been kind of developed. And a lot of people, if they really like an illustration that they've done, and they know that they've kind of made a, a whole world behind it, they can do a series of that. Like if I wanted to, I could keep going with this eventually and do a whole bunch of different fairies with flowers on their backs and that sort of thing. So there's a lot you can do with it. Uh, well, bye glitter. Fairies that hide in flower beds. Remember, write down every idea you have. Fairies that hide in flower beds that have flowers on their backs. And if I wanted to, I could just make that an entire series. And not only that, for those of you who have seen my series, my Fortified Flora, um, it's still on and off but these ones where I was taking flowers and turning them into fortifications. Um, anytime you're doing something like that, you know, you can turn it into multiple products. So that could be a coloring book. If I just felt like inking them, it's a coloring book. If I want to kind of do some little stuff on it, maybe color it, maybe just do tones, it could be postcards. If I want to make them big, they could be prints. If I make enough of them, it's a book. You gotta think kind of in terms of products sometimes when you're a freelance artist, because everything you do is money. Either money spent or money made or lost, it's, it's totally up to you. Hi Connor! Thank you for the raid! <laughs> Fure, hello! Fure, oh man! Actual Fure. Fure. We know you. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That's great. I've known Fure for like I know 10 plus you. years. Yeah, I knew about you and Chamba way back on DeviantArt. Long time ago. Long, long time. I was a fan. And Gabe's known you for about that long, if not. We don't know each other personally. I've been just a little fangirl, let's say that. <laughs> I know your work. I know your style. Hopefully that's not too creepy. Foo, I didn't know that you, uh, streamed. Yeah, I didn't really know that either. That's great. Hey, if you guys want to see some kick-ass art, go follow Foo Ray. Seriously. That's crazy. So right now I'm working on a little fae for a viewer who wanted a fae, and she had um, technically won one of my challenges during a stream a little while ago, so I stick to my word. Um, so we're going to be doing that, and I'm probably just going to do tones on it once I get to the marker part, but Gabe Galva, what? Yep. Yeah, that's me. That's him. This is Gabo. We, uh... Well, here. We all live together. Yes. He is a disembodied voice. I'll give <laughs> you his face. Hold on. Give me my... You're gonna end up giving me... You're gonna give him something else. Well, move your camera, brah! I'm trying. I'm working on it. Uh, well, here. You might want to do more than that. I don't know. Gabe also streams Mondays and Wednesdays. I stream Tuesdays and Thursdays. So... Here is Gabo. He is here now. Falcon. 
Okay, so I'm gonna look up a leaf real quick. I don't know, what kind of leaf. Maybe an oak leaf? Ah, too round. Uh, not a maple. Ash. Leaf. Ash. No, that wouldn't really do either. I don't want a maple leaf. Mm. How do you stream every week and I've never run into your page? Right. Dude, we've been doing it for probably like a year and a half at this wow. point. So, I don't know. We stream at night and at this time. Usually... Mondays and Tuesdays are at 9 p.m. Central, and Wednesdays and Thursdays are 4 p.m. Central, so. Oh my god, you guys, I have no idea what you're talking about even right now. Stealing dogs. <laughs> I don't know what Ruskell said. Oh yeah, Snigel, get some sleep, man. If you if you work in tonight, you need that sleep, bro. Get it. Break off a piece of sleep. Bye. I agree to both things. Do we ever know? Oh man. I think I missed something. <laughs> one of those times you guys you're gonna see me do a uh, pencil because usually I'm doing my cold erase with marker and pastels but when I do ink work and tones I like to use pencil first remember I've told you in the past 0 0.9 0.9 is so good it's so good Yeah, you guys, I'll give him a follow. Seriously, you're not going to be disappointed. He does great work. Uh, let's see. What will be a cute little... Oh, yeah. We're going to go caterpillar on this guy. Or maybe a snail. What do you think? Caterpillar or snail? Probably a snail. Let's do a snail. Eliza, do you like snails? Fury, how long have you known Connor? Or how'd you guys meet? Just Twitch or other? <laughs> <laughs> It was during Deviant when um, when I was really into Deviant Art, so that was a while ago. <laughs> I don't trust that place anymore. Um, oh, you met Connor through Twitch. That's awesome. Yeah, Twitch has been a great resurgence um, for I think artists of all kinds. Because Deviant Art, I feel like, has really fallen to the to the wind. We'll say it's not as good as it used to be. But and Instagram has kind of taken over as well. So I guess that means I kind of fell behind even with all the people I was following on Deviant. <laughs> I should have probably went and looked for them on Instagram. I didn't even think about it. So yeah, anyone who's new to our stream, uh, that's Gabe's social stuff. And here's mine. Basically, we're the same names on everything. She loves his art so much. That's great. State art form. Uh, bye, Fire Seal. 
Great to see you as always, homie. chiseling the eye. They have to break off all the parts to get the figure in there and then break down further to get the, the jawline in and all that stuff and then they eventually get down to doing the eye work and stuff. Same thing with drawing. Same, same thing. Especially when you're doing a, a thumbnail, like with charcoal. Yeah, I don't know if I'd do that. I mean, that's that's a very fine art approach, I guess. But usually they do that on the big canvas. You know, when they're blocking out a painting. If you're doing just little thumbnails, honestly, I usually do them on a post-it note with like a Bic pen. You know, because at least then you can erase. You know. Um, if you're one of those people that either does undo a lot when you do digital work, or if you erase a lot when you use pencil, I highly suggest, as a challenge, you start doing things in pen. Um, it's going to break you of a lot of bad habits. It's going to get you into um, living a little bit more dangerously and loosely, but at the same time, planning better. It's going to force you to plan better, do more up here and less down here, right? Um, Think of it like it's 80% pre-planning, 20% execution. Large shapes. Huh? So Nitro, you're not using those then for thumbnails, right? This like sounds more like you're sketching thumbnails out. Thumbnails are like this big, man. Like, thumbnails are tiny. 
It sounds to me like that you like nitro. You're you're, you're blocking in a painting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thumbnails are like this. This is a thumbnail. So you you do like your orientation, your ratio of your piece, and be like, all right, there's gonna be a guy over here. He's gonna be doing this thing. He's gonna be holding this stuff. He's got a thing here. There's a thing in the background, maybe a mountain. Blah blah. blah. That's a thumbnail. I mean, it's a very crude thumbnail, but thumbnails are tiny, very, very tiny. Um, and usually you want to do those before you even touch doing anything bigger. I think it's funny whenever I draw my snails, it looks like they have a cinnamon roll attached to their back. <laughs> Straightforward, but Cabbage Patch. Now you got me thinking there are a lot of deviant people going around doing stuff to cabbages. Feels so good. So, Furbies, I think, were actually made in response to people liking gremlins a lot. <laughs> um, and so, no, I'm serious. Yep. Like the movie Gremlins, but they couldn't make a Mogwai mm -hmm. because, you know, copyright. So, they made Furbies. Pretty sure. Yeah, I so thought it, I remembered reading that. It took them forever, though. I mean, that was like several years later. Yeah, but I think it was still in response to that. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just remember reading something about it. And then they came out with a Mogwai. Did Fur they? Furby, yeah. Really? <coughs> More recently. <coughs> <coughs> oh, gross. I would also think that a fairy would have mainly rollers. <laughs> I know what? this is thinking a little bit too far, but I would think that all fairies would have molars because molars are for, uh, like, vegetarian stuff. So I think fairies would always, at least fairies that weren't carnivores, would be just molars because they're just, like, think of a hippo or, um, you know, not like a bronchiosaurus or whatever even. Like, they mashed on leaves and stuff. I so guess if that's what they do. Yeah, I mean, if they're just herbivores. But if they're like... So you could have evil fairies that are carnivores that have really, like, incisors and stuff. I'm trying to think, like, what, what fairies eat that's their size. Like, bugs? Like, leaves and junk. No, no, no. no they, they befriend bugs. No, I know, but, like, if, <laughs> if they were carnivores, they would eat bugs. And then small rodents, I guess. Small yeah. rodents would be, like, cows to them, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. Well... Like, a, a rat would probably be similar to an elephant to them. Yeah. But, like, I think they usually eat, would eat berries and uh, leaves, foliage, that sort of thing. 
Thank you. Thank you, Cactus. Thank What's everybody you. doing? What's everybody doing? What are you doing? Anybody want to give me their best and worst of the day? Mmm. Vulture fairies. That's good, too. Maybe they've got beaks. They help to deconstruct the body. Decompose? Decompose it. Deconstruct it. Whatever. Oh, okay. Same shit. English is in Gabe's first language. <laughs> oh, his elbow's way too far down. That was pretty best. I was like, crippling anxiety about her work long. That's pretty worse. I understand. I hope pizza lessens the blow. <laughs> pizza is pretty best. Best of the day, painting six plus hours worse, probably forgetting to eat. Yeah, I could understand that. I usually have like a little, I don't know, bowl of nuts or a snack thing nearby in case I do forget to eat. Because sometimes if you start displacing on your art and you're really just hungry, something bad's going to happen. <laughs> so make sure you're eating because you might get hangry at your piece. You don't want that happening. Getting my postcard page in. I'm so sleepy. Oh, Cass, no. My white oil pastel is tiny. I saw that pic, Eliza. Yeah, it's crazy. Important question, mechanical or wood pencil? Um, I'm going to say mechanical, but that's just because you can get so much like different variation and it's more cost effective, I feel like. Wait, and I, I just feel more wasteful like having a regular pencil and just sharpening that all the way down, throwing it away, and I don't know, I feel like once I buy this and I'm just using lead, I feel like that's better. See, you know what's crazy though is that people don't know about the other mechanical pencils. Oh, the lead holders. Lead holders. Yeah, lead holders are okay. I mean, is this technically a mechanical or is this a that, lead holder? That's still a mechanical. I mean, they're all lead holders, technically, but... Yeah, so, I mean, there are things... I'll show you what a lead holder is for those that don't know. A lead holder is this guy. Get out! What? I got mine if you want to use No, if I wanted yours, I asked for yours. Here's mine. So this is, and honestly I rarely use this now because I, I do so much in my tinier sketchbook, but this is a 5.2 millimeter. Alright, think about that for a minute. A lot of the mechanical pencils you know of, this is a 0.9. Alright, usually people are using 0.7. This is a 0.9. This is a 5.2. All right, so that's huge. This is actually the lead. So you, you hit this end here, and out comes the lead. So it's not exactly a mechanical pencil. It's just like a lead release, basically. So these are good for if you're messing with like a, a bigger piece, something like that. It, it keeps you really loose. And like we were saying earlier, honestly, the bigger the lead, the better, because it's going to keep you from doing details, which some people need that. I really feel very passionate about the fact you don't need anything under a 0.7 unless you're a graphite artist that knows what they're doing. You do not need a 0.2. I really don't think anybody does unless you are strictly a graphite artist. Then you probably know what graphite powder is and wet graphite and all that stuff. But if you're just an artist, you're just going about your stuff, you don't know what you like yet in terms of medium, you do not need a really small mechanical pencil. You really don't. Oh no, Nitro. Have some almonds or something near you. Yeah, and sharpening it really does kind of suck. Honestly, I do... It's funny you asked that, Lychee, because I forgot that this is my primary pencil. 
I use regular pencils all the time, but they're not they're not graphite. This is a brown brown pencil. So I'm doing all my commissions and stuff. Like this isn't graphite. This is a coal erase. Like Gabe and I basically use coal erases. So it's a brown and it doesn't smudge or anything, so this is what I usually use on these. Um, but when I am using, like, when I did this one, and I do a lot of uh, pieces like this where it's just some tones, and, you know, I'll probably be selling this at Dragon Con. Speaking of cons, Fu Ray, do you do cons? Conventions? Oh, yeah. He does. You do? Yeah. Okay. You gonna be at Dragon Con or New York? I imagine he'll be at New York. I don't think. Foo, you never done Dragon Con, have you? Um, so like this one started off like this, where it's pencil, it's graphite. But, um, you know, then I know I'm gonna ink it because I don't like having sketches in graphite because I know they're gonna smudge eventually. Um, and if you've got a sketchbook, pages rub on each other and stuff. And unless you put something in there to protect it, either way, it's still gonna rub. So I like to use uh, the cold erases because they don't really rub. They really don't. So uh, the only time I do use graphite is when I'm going to erase it, honestly. So there's that. Oh, <laughs> whack pen. Ugh. Until the power goes out, foo. Hi, Kaiser. Then you're fucked. Then you can't do nothing. Don't lose your uh, analog skills, kids. Because when the apocalypse comes... Yeah, dude, Dragon Con's great. I don't have enough published work to justify going outside your area. Ah. Who? Foo. Foo, come on. Dude, you could get your own published work. I am, like, not even half as popular as you. Not even, like, even half. And I've even done published work. You, like, you can do published work on your own. Like, I was actually just talking to them earlier about the fact, like, you can make perfect bound self-published books. You don't need Kickstarters. You don't need any of that bullshit. All you gotta do is just go to a small printer and get a couple made. No, I mean, like, he... You know. Yeah, no, he, he knows about that, but, like, you've done plenty of, like, for Udon, haven't you? Yeah, you were the Capcom guy with Chamba, weren't you? That's how I remember you. You guys did Capcom stuff all the time. Or are you just living off of inter internet funds now? Patreon funds. Oh yeah, do you have a Patreon? If you got any of that stuff and you want to self-promote, go for it. We have a good art community here. A lot of people that are smart about art and things. I'm going to be useless anyway. Dude, you ever think maybe we're in the apocalypse? <laughs> if we're in the apocalypse, ooh. <laughs> Get to them cons, bruh. Get them. Like, I don't know if I want to put in his next stuff. Do I want to put in the next stuff? I don't know. I like that snails are almost like a, uh, a shelled version of like the Loch Ness Monster, but technically on land. Like, I like that. Hey, Kaiser's here. Yeah, I saw him. No, I didn't see him. Mm hmm You saw him at uh, Gen Con, right? No, I didn't get a chance to see him. Oh, yeah. Kaiser, how'd the rest of Gen Con go? Oh, how was Gen Con for you two? <laughs> good! Very good. It was actually my best show I've ever done. It actually beat out uh, Dragon Con's record last year, so that was cool. I honestly didn't think I'd do better than Dragon Con last year, but I killed it. Killed it. It's great. He was a coattail guy, he says. I've done published work before, I don't just do regular working on a pinup or wayward. Oh. Only one offs. Oh man. You gotta you gotta get 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 some stuff together. Start pitching the image, dude. While the going is getting. Cause they're uh, they're hungry for new shit. I mean I'm sure you've seen the the comic stands. Yes, guava sea slugs would just be small Loch Ness then. I mean, technically they're just anti-shell slug or snails, right? And Kaiser, I passed your guys' like block a couple times. It looked real nice. They did a really good job, and it was cool to see your art on the thingy. Every time I walked past, though, you were just busy. 
but that's a good thing. Double-edged sword, right? He says he's got crippling anxiety when it comes back. <laughs> All the old guard, I would, uh... The old guard, is that what well, you Well, yeah, guys? I mean, like, I, like, like, we've been, you know, like, we've been slumming it on the internet for, like, 10 plus 15, 20 years. Um, I think, uh, it's, it's about, you know, it's due time that you, you got a book of some sort. Or some substantial work. Yeah, I, I mean, I could have sworn you've gotten that comic deal or something, but no? Am I wrong? I mean, look, yeah. if, if I got a comic, dude, you can get a comic. Like, yeah, for real. Oh. You don't want to bug me. Bye, Cactus. Bye, Cactus. There's a difference between bugging people, though, and just, you know, making connections, talking to people, <laughs> calling in favors in some cases, you know? But... What? Hater trolls, Kaiser. What do you mean? Why do they hate it? Don't read that shit. Honestly, when I did mobile games for 10 years, the best thing to do is to not even look at reviews. If you ever have something that, like, millions of people play or whatever, don't look at reviews. Because honestly, there's always going to be people that are unhappy with anything, so they're going to complain. And it's just going to upset you, and there's no point to do that, you know? Like, you're just asking for pain, man. Just avoid them. Move on to the next thing. Prioritize and keep yourself, uh, keep yourself busy with the next, next thing you've got. Just do one after the next. Because if you get hung up on what people are thinking of the past thing, you're not going to be happy. Oh, that's awesome, Foo. Like, uh, what kind of a game? A video game? A board game? What kind of game? Or can you not say? I get it. So, Kaiser, that might just be because they're, like, your demographic. Because Gen Con, those people, that crowd in general is fantastic. Mm -hmm. They were so loving and just accepting and welcoming and all that stuff. So... I would go off what they said, mainly. If they said it was great and you feel good about it, then that's all that matters, right? And if other people are saying messed up crap, whatever, they're under the veil of the internet, too. Mm -hmm. Okay? So a lot of people are going to say mean stuff via the veil of the internet. Believe me, mobile games was like <laughs> the epitome of that. Um, Fantasy Strike, cool! Street Fighter type game. Oh, neat. Are they all your character designs? That'd be great. Yeah, Kaiser. Totally. That was my first Gen Con, and oh my god, it is like my number one fave convention now. I'm with you on that. They were so amazing. All those people are so sweet, so knowledgeable. They knew what they liked. They were great to talk to. The whole fan base was fantastic. I only had maybe... Two bad interactions, I think, the whole whole weekend. How would you get into this hall? Yeah, God, they were so mean. There were, the two I had were, like, massively bad. Bad people. But, like, everyone else was fantastic. I feel so, like that one girl was just hangry. She's either hangry or just an entitled kid. Like, that's what she struck me as. Because she was with a group. She was dressed as Voltron chick. She was... Mm -hmm. Just probably a rude little teen. But, oh my god, it was so bad. <laughs> oh, character intro and ending comics. I'm playing story mode. Cool! Longvo did all the designs. I don't know Longvo. Do you know Longvo? No. Do you have a link to their stuff, Foo? I haven't heard of Longvo. Do they have an internet presence? Oh man, I'm gonna give this guy a banner.
actually a company that puts out, uh, usually Capcom art books. But yeah, they are, I mean, the name is, from what I understand, from Udon Noodles, yeah. <laughs> see his face on the wall. Um, I'm not familiar, but that's okay. He's good. Like, I've seen dude at shows all the time, but... Oh, that's a cute Blanca. Oh, Kaiser, I can't show what I'm working on. I'm all blocked up by that NDA, man. When do you think you'll be able to? No idea. Um, what did you work on yesterday on stream? Uh, oh, you gave, like, perspective tutorials. Yeah. I think, uh, next week we're gonna stream normal, but then the week after that we won't be able to because... Dragon Con! So if anybody's gonna be at Dragon Con, come see us. We'll be at our tables. Uh, I think I'm 3.35... I don't know, actually. Um, I think it's on my Instagram. <laughs> were you 339 or something? What were you? We don't know what tables we are. I think we're just in the pop and comic art area. But we live in Wisconsin right now, so it's going to be a little bit of a trek down to Atlanta. Hotlanta. Um, yeah, I think it might be 335. I thought it was 335, yeah. Oh, no, Guava. Well, you can always watch the replay if you want. He did some pretty quick perspective stuff towards the end. It was like the last hour, I think. Yeah, Fu, if you're into like, if you're a party person, Dragon Con is like the con party, basically. Every hotel, the lobby is basically a club. The minute you walk into the hotel, there's a DJ in the lobby and people are already lit. It's basically, like, it's basically an anime convention where everyone is over 21. So people are like drink, like legit drinking. And they have money. And they have money, yeah. Yeah, which is a good thing. And everyone's cosplay is like... Yeah, really cosplay good. is insane there. Like, that is the King Cosplay Con, I think. Oh. Aside from like a anime Los Angeles or whatever. And probably San Diego gets some, right? Yeah, oh yeah. But I mean, like, Dragon Con's kind of known for being the party con, as well as, uh, like, cosplay heavy. But, um, yeah, no, it's good. Uh, it's sad, though, that Dragon Con Tom Trainer died a little bit ago. He was in charge of the, the artist's alley and stuff, and he just, he had, like, six heart attacks over the past decade or something, and he finally went, but it was super sad. He was, I, like, was on talking terms with him a lot, on e email a lot, you know, he's a really, really, really nice guy. And I ran into him at C2E2. Real nice guy. Oh, there you go. Oldness. Yeah, we don't do any of that, and we're not gonna. Gabe's 38, I'm 32, I've never been a party person, I'm not gonna be... I just accept that. I'd rather go up to my hotel room, watch nature documentaries, and draw. That's it. And I am more than happy to do that. If I'm at a con all day and I'm talking to people and I'm like on for that many hours, I just want to not do anything afterwards. You know, I feel like um, the people who drink, mm -hmm. um, they're able to go out to the parties because they, you know, like they just they just drink and then you know it sort of gives them that extra energy yeah i could see that that um, like boost of all right yeah. more people let's go i could see that but since we ain't drinking yeah we don't usually we ain't drink. party we're not party folk we're actually pretty lame <laughs> but you know what i like it that way so what ifs 
So I called sword. you an old ass. I am an old ass. He's a grouchy man. I am old. We're all getting old, though. Like, I feel like there was a time where, like, all of us were on DA, mm -hmm. and, like, that was the good place to be. There weren't as many teen trolls, I feel. It was more of a reputable place to be, and it was fun. I mean, that's how I met Gabe. I met Gabe on DeviantArt. But, um, yeah, after that went south, it's like there wasn't really an equivalent. And I'd even say, like, Instagram isn't really an equivalent either. It's just there's a, a place now. Yeah, there's not, there's not a cohesive place where all the artists hang out. Yeah, I and, mean, like, ArtStation is a little bit too professional. Yeah. You know, back then it was a lot more about just improving and talking to each other, being fans of each other. Back in the day when the internet was young. <laughs> Maybe that was why the internet was young and new still. Mm -hmm. God, that's messed up. <laughs> yeah, right, Kaiser? No, I I probably tried to go back two or three times, and every time, like, the first thing I'd post, someone would just comment with, like, faggot, or something messed up. I'm like, all right, I'm out. This is not where I want to be. You met Gabe through Void? Yeah. Where I left all my potential? <laughs> Aw, foo. Man, you're bringing me down. No way. Sounds like you don't do enough original stuff. Sounds like you're upset that you have to do a bunch of things that aren't really your bag. Do you get to do much original stuff, or are you always usually doing something for someone else? Right, Kaiser? I feel like that's kind of what Twitch is becoming. Mm -hmm. Which, that's probably why I'm so drawn to it now, because I do feel like it's almost the, I don't know, uprising of the community of artists getting back together again. I think the only downside is that, like, it, it's only really, like, if you're a streamer, yeah. like, if you actually are cool with streaming, then, then you'll show up, but otherwise, like, the people who don't like to be on the, in the spotlight, then it gets harder for them. Yeah, but that's part of, like, growing and adapting, I feel like. Yeah. Like, as an artist on the internet, you have to grow, adapt, do things you don't want to do sometimes. Like, the mere fact we even have to use social media for some of us is horrible. Like, it's a necessary evil, unfortunately. Yeah, but foo, then what's the point of being an artist, homie? Gotta get yourself in there. Gotta lose some sleep and start your own stuff. Something like that. Put away that Dreamcast for a year. Get some comics done. You can do it. Then all of a sudden you're getting an invites. You're, you're a guest. You get a free table at Emerald City. Okay, okay, you Pushing your agenda. I'm saying. It's possible. <laughs> Old deviant art, yeah. That would well, I think that's what it is though. Technically, Twitch plus Discord kind of equals your own mini deviant art that you can boot mm -hmm. people out of and keep tabs on everybody. <laughs> you know, but oh, that sucks, Foo. I'm gonna guess, Foo. Do you like to play Overwatch? You seem like you could be an Overwatch or Fortnite guy. Yeah, Nitro, get some food, man. That's where I'm at right now, Foo. I got, like... I got NDA work coming out of my ass and I can't do anything otherwise. And then I'm working on another thing, and then another thing, and none of it is my thing. It drives Gabe crazy sometimes, but once in a while he'll say fuck it, and he'll just, like, make a zine. Like, your last zine you've made in, like, two days. Yeah. I feel like that's just a... 
it's rage. It's it. I don't. It's not. It's rage like you quit. were constipated and you yeah. just <laughs> had a huge three-day dump. Yeah. <laughs> three art dump. Yeah. Well, thanks, Serenity. Yeah. Sorry, it's not a female, Eliza. I don't know. Maybe it is actually. It could be. You don't actually see the chest, so it could be a lady. Who knows? And honestly, is it important? <laughs> well, that's actually a really good idea. What? If I just, uh, uh, he said I should, uh, blur the camera so that, like, nobody can see my D NDA work, and then I can still stream. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you could. But what's, what, what's the point? Like, we want to see art, right? Are yeah. you here for Gabe, or are you here for the art? You can answer that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're here for Gabe's face, I understand. Oh, good, Eliza. Oh, night, Yushin. Thanks for dropping by. Good to have you. Yeah, Serenity. I haven't read that, but I have looked at a lot of Brian Froud's concept work. I mean, um, this book I made, whenever I'm at a convention for Grigor, everybody's always like, oh man, do you like Brian Froud? I'm like, yeah, does it show? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he kind of does look a bit Froudish, but... I didn't even realize that until people started pointing it out. And I think that's a good way to technically have your uh, inspirations come out is through your work and not necessarily be telling people, you know, unless they ask. And then I, I usually don't even know what my inspirations are. Um, but I, I guess if I had to say it'd probably be Brian Froud and Beatrix Potter, mainly. Apple and sparkled water. Am I a real elf? Doesn't matter. I'd like to think I am. Yeah. You pull on your ears a little bit for a couple of years, you'll get here. It's not a big deal. Just gotta be committed, man. Biological elf. Yep. However, neither of my parents were elves, so I guess I'm adopted. Maybe I'm a cabbage badge kid. <laughs> I still don't get it. Still don't understand. Oh, cabbage badge kids, what I had you. Changeling. Has anyone played Etrian Odyssey? Etrian? Etrian Odyssey. What is that? Is, How remember do you that, spell remember, it? Huh? How do you spell it? Et, Etrian? E, E, sound it out. Et, 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 etrian. Etrian. I, mm -mm. <laughs> no. E, T. R I A N R A Y N O N D Etrian. What does that mean? Yes, Ed Sheeran. Thank you, Lychee. <laughs> <laughs> On point, girl. On I don't know point. what Etrian means. Etrian. Well, look it up, man. Etrian meaning. Uh, I don't think it's a thing. Well, then how am I supposed to know what that is? And if it's not a real word, I can't necessarily sound it out because it could be wrong since it's not a real word. Hey, Siri. You turned her off, remember? You turned her off? You turned her off. No, I, I know I turned her off. Oh, yeah, I did too. No, I don't think it's an, a real word. I think the Japanese people are just crazy. They're pooey in it. No one knows what that means here. I oh, know, right? Etrian. Et Etrian. 
Etrian or Etrian? I think it's Etrian. Etrian Odyssey. It's a game on 3DS and 2DS. It's like a dungeon crawler, but like old school, like first person view. And you gotta like, as you're going through the map, like mm -hmm. it doesn't make the map for you, or okay. there's no map. Like you gotta like draw the map out yourself. Um, Wait a minute. You're okay with that, but you complain at Majora's Mask because mm -hmm. you gotta keep track of junk. It's not. It's not the. It's not that part that I hate about Majora's Mask. It's it, maje majestic mask. Um, it's the fact that, like, there's the whole game is backtracking, like, and it's constant backtracking, and then you gotta like rewind time. And I don't know. Like, Cass, I'm, you're you're not a you're not an elf, Cass. You're a fairy. Confused. Cass, Cass, I thought you were Candy Skull Girl. Well, she was confused because of the, the Serenity. Serenity was saying she's talking about elves. Cass, elves are not fairies. You're a fairy. It's different. Lai Chi. That thing should be in the garbage. Why do you... I don't know why people buy those wood pose dolls. I don't know why they still make them. Like... That's one of those things, like, that, pe that, that art companies are still making, and they're like, oh, we're going to keep making money off of this stupid It's just artist. how to draw books, man. Yeah. Everybody thinks, oh, it'll help me. No. No. Well, like you know, all your characters are going to be amputees. I hope you're happy. <laughs> Foo is way more cool. Yahoo! Foo, you should start doing, you should start drawing like, um, not for, uh, not safe for work stuff and just go under the name of Yaroof. Yaroof. How do you get custom pogs? Because I'm Mexican, bro. I got connections down in Juarez. No, he does it Mexican style. <laughs> I do it Mexican style. I order it from a company and then I punch the Punch them out of a paper. Here, I'll show you actually. Let me say. Thanks. Now you opened a can of worms. Thanks. <laughs> Tasty worms. Here we go. How to eat fried worms. Y'all remember that book? Good book. Probably like one of five books that I've ever read in my life. So, I order this sheet of paper, right? From cat print uh like that and then i literally just you should see if they can do the gold foil on it i don't know if they can on that cardstock i think i tried and then they said no i think or do i have to email them is that what it is i gotta ask them first? well you put it through and you say foil okay yeah, basically, I got like a heavy duty punch. Oh, we're just kidding, dude. Don't do the porn stuff. We're just saying because we have a friend who, um, when he does something he doesn't want to do, like, or want associated with his name, he'll do it with his name backwards. Mm -hmm. Which he thinks he's so clever for. It's like, nah. What was I going to do that I was going to do Obag? It doesn't matter. It, hey. Hey, it doesn't matter. Drop it. Oh, bag. Drop it. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm gonna have like 12 pogs by the end of the year. Then you can actually slam them. Oh, no. Slamming pogs? Ooh, <laughs> I never thought of that. Uh oh. I'm gonna get the, Uh oh. I'm gonna get some weird people asking <laughs> for pogs. Um, I heard that you sell pogs here. Uh, now, sir, you know that's illegal, but why don't you come back here by the table and we can talk. Okay, Gabe. No. Keep working. And then I beat them up. Keep working. I am working. There you go. I actually have to do digital things now. <laughs> Alright. Oh, no, um, what I meant is, it's just me and Ashley live together. 
We um, used to live with uh, six other artists. Yeah. In a house in Wisconsin, if you've heard of Von House, it's spelled like this. We lived at Von House with uh, Gawky, Von Art, Art of Price, Sketch Geek, Jonas Goonface. Um, am I forgetting someone? No. Yeah. Dude. We lived there for probably two years and moved out this January, so. Very counterculture junk. It was pretty cool, sort of, but then it like was also roommate living situation, so it was not cool. I'm time. horrible with roommates. I'll just admit it. I'm horrible with roommates. I am too much of a stopo. I don't know. Just stop. Yeah. Just I, stopo. I would get on their case too much. I'm a nag. That's what I am. I'm a nag. I'm not fun to live with. I think we were just we were like. I was like a decade older than most of them, so it was like, guys, wash your dishes. Some of them were good, but it's just, you get to a point and you're like, all right, I'm too old for this shit. I cannot do this anymore. Cannot. And I found a correlation between the better you are at art, the less you do your chores well. (laughs) Because Gabe and I were always doing chores. It's still a good time, good experience, I'll say. Yeah. You're. Yeah. Basically. I mean. Yeah. They're just they're, they're very skilled. I mean, if you look yeah. up their accounts, they have way more followers, they mm-hmm. have, you know, they were more established, um, oh, my whistle came out, did you hear that? Established? <laughs> established? I think Tyler, is, Tyler's sort of in my boat where he, um, like if we were to determine things by, like, I guess, like, experience level, then he is, like, at, he was at the bottom, because, I mean, he's... He's worked on like maybe two board games, maybe three now, maybe four. Uh, but otherwise, it's just a lot of low key. Like, uh, um. it's hard to put me in that too, just because I came off of a career doing mobile games for ten years. So I was new to freelance. So of course that made me one of the babies. Um, so that was interesting because they had already been kind of grinding at conventions and stuff. So. What does Tyler do? I don't know anything about him. He seems like the kind of guy. He keeps to himself. Um, he's very... Sh- not shy, but silent. <laughs> he's very silent. He does keep to himself. Um, unless you get him when he's in his zone of like board games or if you're drawing with him, that sort of thing. Um, very tough to open up. Uh, it was really weird because I think out of everybody I lived with them for two years and they didn't really know anything about me um, I think I knew more about Tyler than anybody <laughs> knew about me really um, but he, he's very closed as a person um, he does he does do um, board games board game art stuff like that he does a lot of freelance work um, there's a stigma, though, in that house that if you do freelance work, you're a little bit less than someone who does independent artist work, which I don't think there's a difference. You make money how you will as an artist, so I think having that division is uh, like a, a detrimental thing. It's, it's The more you section people, the less you're including people. I feel that in a lot of areas, the more you keep like sectioning off people, the less you're actually keeping equal and fair and all that stuff so I feel like when you're like well you're a freelance artist and you're an independent artist that's not helping anyone you make money where you can you do you know your stuff when you can but to look down on somebody because they do more contract work than their own stuff that's not good (laughs) 
Oh, okay. As long as you're getting back to it, man. Yeah, dude. Get back that, to your heart. That's what I was wondering. I was like, man, where... All of a sudden, I start seeing you popping up and, you know, like, um, online and stuff. And I'm like, yo, how have I not seen Fu around more before this? But that explains it. So, Fu, this is my my consona, I'll say. I dress like this at conventions, too. I'll show you a picture so you can kind of... It's my brand. I feel like it's a uniform. Since it's my brand, this is... I have to be consistent, you know? Um, so... When I go to conventions, I'm your friendly art elf that can draw your pets in armor and stuff like that. <laughs> so, I try to also uh, make it consistent and cohesive on Twitch as well. They've got the same branding, they've got the same visuals, all that kind of stuff. Literal visuals. So, the fact that I'm Cloverkin is technically me, you know. Um, I have a basic bitch name in real life. My name's Ashley Erickson. That's very basic. You cannot Google that. But if you Google Cloverkin, you'll get all my stuff. So um, I do a lot of branding workshops and stuff too on how to market yourself as an artist, how to actually make it so you're consistent through all your social media, how to do a branding thing, how to like get your colors all figured out, all that kind of stuff. Fangs and contacts are pretty much the first decade of your online presence. Mm -hmm. Bring it back. <laughs> if, if you're happy with that, any way to set yourself apart nowadays helps so much. Um, my booth always kind of sticks out because it looks like a giant tree. Um, and I'm dressed like an elf. So I remain memorable in people's minds when they leave the convention. Because, um, I mean, if you went up to anybody and you know who's been to a con that I've been at and it's like... Well, were you in the artist alley? Yeah. Do you know the elf that, you know, does fantasy art and pet portraits? Yeah. It's like, that's kind of what you want. It's technically real life Googling, <laughs> verbally, you know? It's like being able to tell someone maybe two or three things and be able to know who it is. Um, so I kind of wanted to be that. But I figured any way to make yourself stand out more, as long as it's true to yourself and you're cool with it, and honestly, at a convention, lowering your dignity a bit <laughs> is a huge thing. It helps with sales, it helps with breaking the ice already. Especially with people who are cosplaying, you've already got a basis to start on. Where'd you get your ears? Oh, I got them here. That sort of thing. Um, talking to people just in general. Little kids like me more with the ears. I don't know, stuff like that, but... No, 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 it seems like a good start. Sure, Fu, go for it. <laughs> you can be the guy version. But if you were a vampire, man, I haven't seen any vampire artists at cons. Do it up. Like, any way to make you more you. And if it reflects your art, that's the main thing. So, I mean, if I was dressing like this and doing sci-fi art, nah. Nah, doesn't fit. But the fact that I'm doing fantasy stuff... It's a little bit of a commitment to, you know, obviously be that all the time, but that's all I like doing, really, so rock what you do. Oh, Nitro, I appreciate that. Hey, Ushi. Ushi. Oh, really, Serenity? Weird. Get your swagger back. Do it. You gotta bring life back to your art, man. It sounds like you're just burnt out. Like, I've been talking to you just this little bit, and it sounds like you are burnt out. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta bring some, uh, some excitement back into that relationship, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do some role play. I don't know. Something. And to answer your earlier question, no. This stays in cons and on Twitch and does not go to the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much, too much, uh much to get in the way. Well, that's cool, Guava. I've never seen that. There is a girl that I follow on Instagram who she is, she's like a skeleton key studio. She's black and white and she usually has um, skeleton stuff. Maybe she added candles. Maybe that's her. Oh, fool. Knowing a 
is half the battle, bro. If you know you're doing it, you can fight it. Uh, Gabe and I have a saying for younger artists who like to bash their art a lot. We call it self-defecating. Basically, they're shitting on themselves. It's the same as self-deprecation. So, for a lot of younger artists, they're like, My art sucks, and I suck. We have this whole rant we go on about it, and it's about self-defecation. Don't be a bummer. Don't self-defecate. actually justify doing this on stream right now and not some of the work I need to do is because this is technically money. I can sell this. As a freelance artist, anything I do, anything I spend time on, should be something I can technically sell. Now, that doesn't mean I have to, you know, do fan art, sell fan art, anything like that. You can make anything you do original work just as well. You just have to own it and you have to do it right. So. Just know that if you ever do become a freelance artist, anything you spend time on is money made or money lost. So that, like I said, that doesn't mean to spend it doing something popular, because you can still make money doing the things you like to do. Um, so definitely do that. But if you're a hobbyist, don't worry about it. Human Eeyore for 10 months? No! <laughs> what happened to you? That's awful. Did you go through a breakup? I mean, even I guess if it's like professional accounts. Oh no, why is my thing here so hot? Why are you being weird, update? stitch. Always a hard one. Oof. 34 years. That's true. Ushi, you and Fu might have a lot in common. <laughs> Is Fu from Chicago too? No? You from Seattle, dude? Was that it? West Coast? Oh, cute. 
cute Nitro. So Nitro, were you born in America then, and then you moved to Germany? You're in Germany, right? That's funny, usually it's, the, it's backwards. I think eight for us was a bit much. Or seven, rather. Seven was too much. Four is manageable. But I'm so much of a loner that, like, that many people just at any time for me is ridiculously hard. So, like, the fact it's just me and Gabe now is perfect. I was born in Germany two months or so after, I moved to Seattle. Oh! Cool, Nitro, that sounds great. That's pretty nice, mm. yeah. yeah, that's like the best case roommate scenario I could think of. Especially if you're like, like me, where you're not big on people, so at least you get your alone time every day, and then when they come home you can kind of be mentally prepped. That's nice. Yeah, I'm just not a people person, really. I can manage people, I can talk to people, but if I have a choice to be with people, not really. <laughs> like, I think I'm a good salesperson, but like I said, once I've done that all day, I don't want to, I don't want to keep going. I'll go back to my hotel room, watch some animals, like whatever. funny because people might think I'm boring but if I met another person that liked doing what I do I think that's so exciting <laughs> <laughs> I love people if I like the people but I'm terrible at working if there's people that entertain I could I could see that I could be tough oh to so use it almost as a procrastination thing Maybe that's good though. I mean, sometimes when you need a break or something, you can just go do that. I mean, you guys probably have a better understanding of each other than the place we were at. They, uh, they didn't party, but they went out a lot. Huh? And they expected us to go, but our schedules never matched up with theirs, so it was really hard for any of us to do anything with them. Because we would technically work during the day, and then they'd work at night, and it just didn't seem to work out. But like, living in a house, they were, a couple of them were extroverts, so they expected us to kind of do what they were doing, and that's not how it works. So, that was already one point of contention, I guess. <laughs> Chill dude. <coughs> Were you Jones in for tacos tonight or is that a different day? Uh I guess. I mean we don't have to. <sighs> Yeah, I don't really want to go 
travel back out again. Did you need to? Remember that we don't have the meat. Oh, right, 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 right. Sorry, forgot. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was a, like a short beat. Hmm? The, the one time I hung out with him. Oh. I don't even remember the burlesque part. That's how like out of it I probably was. I think it was during the convention, but like at night or some shit. Probably. Stuff goes down like that all the time. Just I don't even do that kind of stuff when I'm on a show. I don't go out. Especially at Dragon Con, you can't really go out. Like, if you go out, you're basically not going to be able to get back to your hotel room for over an hour. Because even, like, the elevator wait is nuts. So, it's a crazy one. Like, New York's not even that bad. It's crazy. Some people, though, you only see at conventions, so I get it. Like, I've got a couple of friends that are just convention buddies. Sometimes we all stream, too, so we help each other with that, but... I don't know. Some friends you only see in certain situations, I guess. You're gonna end up being a lot like me. That's okay. You're gonna get some flack from some people who you might hang out with who are party people, and they'll always kind of be like, Oh, you're being lame, come with us. And it's like, No, you know what? I don't like drinking, I don't like partying, I just don't. Sorry, not sorry. I'm just gonna hang back here. And I'm tired, damn it. So the other thing is, a lot of our group uh, is just younger, and because of that, they more energy, more everything, mm -hmm. and it's like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. Totally summer camp. All year summer camp. Oh god, you can't even see this. Sorry. seen each other when I've been around or not so much? No, I think uh, last time I saw him was like New York maybe? Or Which something? time? Like last year or year no, before? No, this is uh, I think it might have been before you. Okay, I was gonna say it must have been before me. Yeah. Because if you would have told me that's who I would have been. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I just totally remembered like a, like the year before you came out. I, uh, like I was just tabling somewhere and I had to go to the bathroom like real quick and like 
I think I almost died. What? Because, like, it, I mean, like, I, I barely made, you know, like, a, a poop. But, like, something inside of me, like, must have, like, ruptured or some shit. Because, like, I started, like, sweating really bad. And I was, like, going to pass out. You know, and I was, like... Was it hot? Uh, I... In there? Y- well, no. No, no, okay. it wasn't warm in there or anything. It was just, like, something inside of me, like, fucked up. And, Maybe like, I was, like... an alien. I don't know. I don't know what happened, but man, Christ, like, dude. I almost died, and uh, and I remember thinking, I'm on the toilet. I'm like, oh god, please don't let me die, on the toilet, at a fucking convention. You I'm know? sorry. Wait a minute. What does this have to do with anything? What were no, you like about? that was like I think that was the same show that that I had seen him at. Um, okay. Because that w- that show was the the last show that, because the the next year then you came to that show. I see. With, yeah. But it was it was a really like bad feeling like you know like imagine like you're no I've thought yeah, about that yeah. you know waiting at the table and you know for someone to come to the table to watch the table and mm-hmm. you have to go to the bathroom <laughs> I don't know maybe some people even bring diapers to cons <laughs> I don't know it's not a bad idea I don't know that would be smart it kind of yeah. <laughs> Like, Gen Con was probably the worst I've ever had to go to the bathroom at a convention. Mm -hmm. Like, multiple times. I had, I, you know what? I'm actually going to blame it on the water bottle. I just got this new water bottle that's got this much more water than my old one. And I think with my old one, I was able to hold it longer. But since this one, and I was going through it like crazy. So. Yeah. Mage, once you do so many cons, you will remember the con by certain little things. It's crazy. Like, super con. Jesus. That one had so many little weird things that I'm just... I don't want to go back to Florida. I don't. I just don't. That's good, though. I mean, strength in numbers, man. Usually we have, like, a con crew we go around with where we can all split hotel rooms, um, so it's cheaper, stuff like that, and it ends up being really smart. So, I mean, only go to a con alone if you can afford to, literally, but also, like, having those people there means you can go to the bathroom, and it is a luxury. (laughs) I mean, really. You're not a baby. Stop. (laughs) That's nice, Guava. That is nice. The best con, though, for that sort of thing is Emerald City because they give the vendors and the artists their own bathroom. They give them their own internet, which they should. Every other con we've been to is like $80 a day for you to have internet. And I'm sitting here like, don't you want us to make money so we want to come back? Give us our own internet. And Emerald's the only one that's done that, honestly, and it's been crazy. Because you'd think the other shows would get on that, but I don't know. It's weird. Oh, Kaiser. <laughs> I mean, that's a luxury in itself a bit, you know? Gabe was at the Oni booth, so he could basically leave whenever he wanted to, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Kaya would just watch stuff and whatever, but for me, I had to wait till Gabe came over at Gen Con to watch my booth, and that was its own thing. That dress so good. (laughs) Thank you, Eliza. It's raining out for the little snaily woo. He's, his job is to actually bring the leaf around to help all the little guys. 
I like micro world things that everybody's got a job to do, and that's why the forest continues to function, because everybody has a job. I like unseen things like that. Secret jobs, secret worlds, that sort of thing. Also, I seem to be going very slow on this one, probably because I don't want to stop, because once I stop I have to go back to working. Other freelancers, you know my feel, right? <laughs> Gabe, you were doing it so hard yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was procrastinating so bad and was having fun with a doodle. That's how you know you might be a little bit artistically constipated. When you get an inch to do something of your own, you end up extrapolating for like an hour, and you're like, well, I'm gonna keep going. Ah, guava. Um, that's expensive. Uh, the only reason Tim and Key can do it is because they make mad money. The rest of us can't do that. Um, Cass, I'd gladly have you on. Uh, the problem is, a lot of the time it is kind of boring until you get a rush. Depends on the convention, though. Um, I could probably have you on at like a C2E2 or something. As long as I don't have to pay you. <laughs> but yeah, usually, uh... Oh, it's been crying? Cute, Eliza. Raining. Crying. Same difference. You know, whatever. Yeah, Cass, I'm most likely not coming back to Kansas or Missouri for any cons. Uh, especially Spectrum. I don't care about that one anymore. But, um... If you'd be willing to come to Chicago, maybe next year if I get in a C2E2, um, we could arrange some. Maybe like I'll pay for your hotel or some crap. I'd be so down with that. Dude, we gotta coordinate you like color-wise though. I want you to match my booth. You can be a fairy, but I want you to match my booth. <laughs> or you could go around the con and hand out my flyers. That'd be cool too. <laughs> yes, I have flyers. Flyers are important, man. Oh, Emmy, hi. How are you? What are you guys doing right now? What's up? Who's doing what? setup and their navigation is really well done. I was really impressed with that last year. Uh, because it's actually spread out over four hotels, like four buildings. It's technically like Nerd Mardi Gras because it's spread out over Atlanta, like the city. Where usually cons are kind of refined into like a giant, you know, warehousey looking area. Um, Dragon Con's actually spread out over multiple buildings. So that can be cool and kind of crappy depending on how you look at it. But it was actually really neat, kind of a breath of fresh air. Um, smaller paintings. Good job, Nitro. Smaller. Good. Good, good. Yeah, foo. Eh, foo. Wizard Worlds. Mm -hmm. Dragon Con can be a bit difficult to get into, yeah. Um, if you have any comic anything, 
behind you, like I worked uh, on a comic Gabe was doing for a while, all I did was flats, but having that kind of credential that you can add into your application will automatically put you above any artist that doesn't have it. So if you can at any point get some comic work or anything from any comic artist, do it. Because if you can actually mention like, I worked on this property, then it'll give you a head up, a leg up, sorry. Leg up. Honestly, one of the harder ones to get into is actually ASUN because it's lottery. And I hate cons that are lottery. Um, a lot of conventions are usually judged, which are my favorites, because then they're actually taking into account the type of art people are doing, 3D, um, otherwise, stuff like that, and they'll actually balance the whole convention to be a good smattering of different things. I hate lottery uh, because it doesn't do that, and you get a whole mishmash of weird stuff sometimes. So I usually appreciate um, the judging more. Then there's a third type of con, which is like Heroes Con, where you basically apply and pay immediately and you get a table. So usually that has like a bum rush of people the day they open. Um, however, Heroes doesn't usually close their applications. A lot of other buy one get one cons do close their applications, so it's it was a weird one. Um, and like I said I've, in the past, I've heard that con was supposed to be good, but this year it sucked. But it was at least cheap enough to where if we decide to go back next year, like the travel and the stay, because that one's in North Carolina, um, it was pretty cheap. So that was a nice part of that, compared to other cons. Like, New York always takes a gouge out of our pockets. And what sucks is when you pay a lot to go to a con, you have to make sure you can make that money back. Um, so it gets a little bit dicey and you have to kind of know your product, you have to know what you usually make, and depending on which conventions you go to, um, sometimes they can be a great con and have an off year. This year, awesome con, usually a fantastic show, bust, total bust this year. And honestly, it's because it was on Easter. Never go to a convention on Easter, never. It's always gonna be a shit show, like nothing happens. It's terrible. You would think more families bring their kids? No. If anything, a show that's on like Halloween would do a lot better because think about it, people are like in costume already. They want more places to wear their costume. Where can we go? There's a convention. Oh my God, let's go to that. So usually stuff like that is better, but Easter, nah, -uh. nah. -uh. Yeah, so I actually heard a great rumor that I'm very excited about that uh, part of New York Comic Con splitting their art section is that if you do original art, you're going to be on the top. If you do fan art, you're going to be put in the basement, which I'm very against the selling of fan art. I've even created like a movement and a web page against it. Um, I won't go into my rant, but if anybody is curious about what that's about, Please read through this before asking me any questions or yelling at me. <laughs> but I thought it was really neat because they're the first con I've heard of to actually physically separate original art from fan art, so I thought that was really cool. Um, Ohio Con is a good one actually for being in Ohio, it's actually a great convention. Hey Buggles! Diversity Con, I haven't heard of that, Emmy. Do you know where, oh, Baltimore. Mm -hmm. There's a Baltimore Comic Con. I'm glad too, May Fox. Like I said, Awesome Con is a great con. It really is. Uh, this year it was just so weird. It was super off. Um, oh, really, Kaiser? Yeah, Sunday was Easter, so. But yeah, this year's Awesome Con compared to last year's Awesome Con was not awesome. <laughs> not for me, Gabe, or even. Sean, honestly. All three of us went and we were like, oh, this is not normal. And then we talked to a lot of people and Kaiser, I gotta say, you're, you did, if you did well, then you did, you were the outlier. Because a lot of people are doing pretty crappy. Um, Nightshade! Nightshade! Hi, Nightshade! Really, Guava? Can you figure out what con that is? Oh, Universal Fan Con. It was a mess. Oh no. 
Oh no. It's really sad when there are conventions that are a mess. Uh, Gaki recently went to Otakon, and if you guys want to see her review of it, you can go look at her Twitter, but she gave some pretty constructive feedback on what they had done kind of poorly and what they could do better. And for being such a big con, I'm actually surprised it was so ill-arranged. Like, it sounded terrible. I'm kind of glad I didn't go, but it was, it sounded bad. Like, just by what she was saying, it sounded pretty bad. Oh, Universal Fan Con. It sounds bad, just the name kind of sounds bad. Oof. I'm glad we only have two cons left this year because I think I'd just be absolutely burnt out otherwise. Party. Oh wow, they canceled the entire con? actually technically set it up where, you know, people could do that and get something from you. I can't believe they canceled the con that close to it going on. That's, that's unheard of. That's they, terrible. They did that with a show recently. I forgot what show it was. Is it the one she's talking about? Nah, maybe. Universal Fan Con? Maybe that's Baltimore? what it was. Nah, I think this was last year. You're not talking about that terrible Tumblr con, are you? Nah, because that one went on. Like, that one was on, and then it crashed. But they had a ball pit game. <laughs> Man, Baltimore. Fair enough, Serenity. I still think it's good for artists to at least have a, a dollar one and nothing else. Like, at least have one that's a dollar. Because mm -hmm. um, honestly, a dollar can make a huge difference. I know that sounds kind of sad, but it's not, I guess. Because, I mean, even friends and family, they don't, sometimes they don't want to buy anything, but they just want to support you. So doing even just that and having it as an option can sometimes be really nice. But, like, Patreon, I don't even use it for physical rewards, by the way. My Patreon is set up as a uh, pay over time financial thing where people can pay for expensive commissions over time. So I don't even offer like the monthly stuff because I wouldn't be able to really keep up with that. Um, I'll be honest, like the fact Gabe can do that, it's nuts. I don't know how he does it, but you can really use it to whatever fits you, which is the nice thing. I think a lot of people get scared because they, they see other people's um Patreons and they're like, oh, well, I gotta, like, upload PSDs and, uh, you know, and like, um, and I gotta do videos and yeah, I gotta do this. You don't do have this. to do any of that. Crap. You literally don't have to do anything. You don't. You don't. It's just another way people can give you money, honestly. I know it sounds terrible when you put it that way, but really, for the people that don't want anything but they want to help, it's perfect. Yeah. Like, it, it, you gotta remember the, the root of the word Patreon patron which is you know like if you think about like 2,000 years ago 2,000? Um, 2,000 2,000 um, I guess 1600s maybe. yeah I mean like and you know like back when like painters you know like oil painters and whatever like Michelangelo and all them dudes um, they had patrons and these people would just give them money to do whatever you know like yo hey here's some money do your thing by the way, 
our church needs a new mural. Just just putting that out there. If you want to, you know, hook us up. Nice shade. Your girlfriend wants your Reddit name and you don't want to give it to her. What are you hiding, bro? <laughs> nice shade. You can't be that naughty. Come on. <laughs> now I am interested. Like, yeah. what? You What's better give that? it to her. You're going to be in trouble. Either way, you're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> Seriously, that's that's I mean, unless, Good luck. unless Good maybe, luck. is she like a, like, hardcore, like, is this a political thing maybe? Like, she's, like, very, uh, on one side of the, the aisle and then you're on the other side of the aisle? What the hell does that mean? That's cryptic. What are you talking about? The aisle? The, the political aisle? You know, like, maybe she's hardcore Republican or maybe he's hardcore Republican? I don't know. It doesn't seem to me like Nightshade is, is hardcore Republican. Are you At saying all. Republican or do you mean religious? Because if you mean religious, just say religious. No. Okay. No, I meant like What does Republican. that have to do with his Reddit? Well, maybe he's on Reddit things, like dissing Nancy Pelosi. I don't, think Pelosi. Many I don't know. on Reddit are there for political oh, reasons. Oh, you'd be surprised. Not as much as the other reasons. Everything is on Reddit. Reddit is for everyone about everything. Oh, no. Is this the joke button? Delete. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Nightshade. <laughs> God, no. You are not that bad, are you? <laughs> Dude, are you addicted to porn? Nightshade, that would be, like, the best bad thing <laughs> that you would have. Because it's like, nothing's wrong with Nightshade. Nightshade's a perfect guy. If you are, like, into some messed up, hardcore furry porn or something, <laughs> I'd believe that, I guess. If you told me that, I'll believe it. Well, I mean, I did draw him on a dire wolf. I don't know. That's his thing. <laughs> That's I'm not, not judging. Fetish. That's just the thing. I'm not judging. I'm just saying, like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Oh, so you post like, oh, oh. interesting. But d aren't you gonna reveal that to her sometime anyway? Maybe you're technically saving yourself time. You might love the red rocket. It's true. Yeah, but Gabe didn't put that in the picture. I don't think. Did no, you? No. <laughs> Did you? No. no. Okay. I would have told him. I think he would have seen it. Yeah. Oh, somebody asked me to, uh, when I was at Gen Con, I was uh, signing a book for some dude. And he, he said, you know, whenever I get my book signed by uh, by the artist, I ask them if they're, if they're willing to draw a dick anywhere in the book. So but just don't, don't, just don't tell me. Cute. And so I ended up... Um, That's fun. Let me, let me see if I can that. get the book so I can show you all what I did. Oh no, Nightshade, really? No, I'm curious. No, I want to know. Dude, you can't do this. I'm so curious now. This page right here. Really? You're going to make me show I this? Just, I just, just that, that page right there. So I I gave the car a, a, a <laughs> giant dong. <laughs> With like a black sharpie? Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a so good use good. of this, this composition. Good. And I, and I said, uh, you're, you'll probably spot it, but it's going to be like, you're not even going to realize that Notice it's Notice the dog is driving the car. Yeah. This is top-notch literature, everyone. <laughs> Just in case you haven't read. This is Gabe's latest piece. <laughs> That's a big, thick book. It's I haven't seen issues. this yet. Four issues. It's only four issues and yeah. it's like this? Well, it's, that's like a uh, hundred and... Oh, I didn't get to see yours and Kyle's oh, like, yeah. cards. It's a hundred issue. It's a hundred, at least a hundred pages. It's like 24, 22 pages. About a hundred pages. I think I'm gonna print out those. Your bio is full of shit. What? <laughs> is hey, it my bio? Is that Russ Manning promising newcomer? Oh, he wrote it. He wrote oh, it. he yeah. did. Yeah. Oh God damn it, <laughs> Kyle. I like that he looks crazy and angry because that's what Kyle Starks is. <laughs> Kyle Starks is crazy and angry, but he's well put together as a human. He always he always mentions that he's like, look, you made me all mad and angry. I don't even have a hat on. That's not hard to do, Kyle. Mm -hmm. It's true, Ushi. Next time, C2E2 <laughs> 2019. Yep. Let's hope for it. Solidarity. Yeah, Emmy, this is actually for Eliza. Uh, I asked what she would prefer for an illustration, because, all right, probably like four streams ago, 
I had everybody guessing my middle name, and it went on for a long time. Oh, that's what this was? Yeah, and eventually she guessed my middle name, so I said, whoever guessed it, even if they Googled whatever, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you did it, Eliza. I don't know how you did it, but she figured it out. So I said, okay, what do you want me to draw on a stream? And so it's been a couple streams since we've kind of matched up where we were. Um, so yeah. She said uh, the month. She spelled it like the month. No, she didn't. No, she, she even didn't. spelled it like, really? yeah. And yeah. I was like, whoa, okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, Nightshade, you got it, second one. How'd you know that? You knew that, you were there, right? Because otherwise that'd be fucked up. <laughs> It was Bob. Bob. Yup. Bob. It was Bob. <laughs> so, Emmy, I just thought I'd do this quick for her on this stream. But honestly, I put a little love into it, so now I'm gonna sell it. Um, either if you guys want it, or if you don't, I'm gonna take it to Dragon Con. So, we'll see what happens. Because, like I said, as a freelance artist, you have to be able to kind of sell everything you make. Which is good for you, I think. As an artist, you should not hoard your stuff. Really, you shouldn't, because someone somewhere will get more joy out of it than you will, because honestly, it was for you when you were creating it, but now that it's finished, it's just gonna go in a pile somewhere, right? Scan it so you've got record of it, and give it to somebody who can adopt it, literally, and appreciate it. Um, because the whole thing is, art's for you when you're making it. When you're done with it, give it away. It's, it's not for you anymore. You got your use out of it, so. Oh, Eliza, you want it? Okay, send me a DM, okay? Or a uh, email, either one. We'll talk about it. I'll give it to you cheaper because it was for you originally. Yeah, Ushi, keep your secret Tumblr. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't want to know that you guys are deviants. Don't tell me. You're all pure to me. Hey, Dragon Wall. Dragon Wall. Dragon Wall. Never mind. Not Dragon Ball, Gabe. No, I was uh, I was thinking of somebody else named Redwall. That. Red Wall is a book series. No, I know, but the, her username is Redwall. Uh, oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. The ATC check. Yeah. yeah. Which she should change her name. Yeah. She's gonna have a lot of trouble. You guys, if you end up like ever making a professional art name or anything, do not use another company or another property's name. Redwall is a book series. You do not want to have that as your art name. You know, that's like saying Target. <laughs> you don't want your name to be Target or Walmart. <laughs> that's fine, Oshi. That is basically, yeah, I still love you. Remember, we all, all talked about this. If I had a not safe for work or a porn name, it would be Slapping Tofu. Because you can hear it. You know what that sound sounds like. <laughs> you can hear that now. Slapping Tofu. Actually, if you want a fun little creative brainstorm right now, everyone put in your porn artist name that you would go under. Gabe, what would yours be? 8-Bit Choro. No, that's, you're going to use that. That's not even deviant. Think of something better. Um, old bag was all right. Anything with bag kind of sounds gross. Probably old bag, yeah. Because yeah. O could be orgasm, you don't know. Yeah. Yeah, that's gross. Look at that. Your drag name is Chocolate Thunder Cake? <laughs> I'm in love. I love it. Ushi, do you have pictures of your drag self? Because I would love that so much. I got a feeling. Loot space. Ray, nice. What's that what's that place down in uh in Boys Town? Is it still there? <gasps> Guava, wet wet fruit. Ooh! Have you seen that wet chick fruit? that has like she has way too many followers, but her whole Instagram is like her fingering fruit. It's no. so visceral. Guava, it's gotta be nuts. W H E T. You don't even know what that means. Yeah, like wet your appetite. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Wet fruit. Either is gross, so go with it. <laughs> also, for those of you who have a problem with moist, oh, if stay you have a moist. problem with that, that word, just think of cake. 
Because no. honestly, I love the word moist because I think of cake. No, I uh, my poor name is Duncan Hines. Because I stay moist. If you were a woman. You can't be Duncan Duncana. No, you could be Duncan. You could just be like a really masculine lady who stays <laughs> wet. It's all right. Yeah, I just think of cake. I don't like the word discharge. Or yeasty. Or crusty. No. Those ones can take a hike. Saturated? Ooh. Most of the time I'll think of color, but eh, other times, eh. Flesh. Oh, really? You don't like flesh? Think of fruit. Fruit has flesh. Oh, no. That sucks, Serenity. That's good, mage. We hate the same words. So, Serenity, that's a good reason to have an art name as well. <laughs> it all messed up. Oh, no, Cass. Cass is flipping out. No, 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 no. No, no more. Also, we decided that next year at C2E2, she's going to be my booth babe. Oh, she's going to dress up like a fairy. A what? Fairy. Oh. Gabe is supposed to dress up when he's my booth babe, but he hasn't committed. I just want to get him a, a cape. I mean, for fuck's sake, it's just a cape. Get over it! I'm fine with a cape. I'll even wear, like, a... If I was going to dress up, I'd probably just go hardcore, like, armor. No, you know. no. This one is you, mine! You can't look better than me. <laughs> like, that's the thing. Why not? You have to just have a measly little cape. Uh. Like, it's got to be pathetic, even. You can make you a goblin. I'll, I'll grow it out by my wizard... Beard. 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 How, How tall, tall is Gabe? How tall do you think Gabe is? I'm curious. How tall do you think Gabe is, you guys? I can so pathetically. <laughs> I just like that sentence because it could be misinterpreted and just heard. I can't wear ponchos because then I just look more Mexican. That's the problem. Uh, well, it's, yeah. It'd be like a cape would have a hood. We could give you some horns that are attached to the hood so you could easily take it off whenever you want. Because that's then, the other thing. Gabe hates wearing costumes. He's like a dog. A dog <laughs> that hates wearing costumes. So he'll, like, take it off every once in a while and be like, Ugh. But then when I take it off, Ashley would be like, Where the hood? Where the hood? Where the hood at? Uh, 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 uh. Would I? I think I'd be busy making money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what 186 is. Hey, Larry Monster, what's up? Maybe that's uh, centimeters. Yeah, it is. I don't know what oh, that yeah, is. Maybe. He is 5'11", right? Try six feet. Are you now? Are you? Are you? No, because Tim's six feet. No, and you're Tim shorter is than like Tim. Six, one. That's the weird thing. I always think I'm taller than Tim. Tim is tall as shit. I had no idea. And I lived with him for two years, and I still felt that, oh yeah, Tim's shorter than me. No. And Sean's like my height, and I keep thinking Sean's smaller than me. I think he is still somewhat smaller. Because I think it goes in height, Tim, you, Tyler, me, Sean, Key. I think he is taller than Sean. I no, because then she'd be taller than me. She's not taller than me. I think... Sean is shorter than me. You think that, but he's not. Hmm. He's really not. He's like my height. Poncho Gabe is spicy. <laughs> yeah, I'd say about like, I'm like 5'11 to 6'1, depending on which grocery store or convenience store I'm walking out of. What? <laughs> what? Because, you know, like, when you're, whenever you walk out of a 7 Eleven, they've got like the, the thing. I heard you say Seminole 11 Seminole in my head. Seminole? Seminole. So like it's like church 7-Eleven? Seminole? Yeah. Seminole 11. That's what I heard. Also, I didn't realize Gabe's so pasty. Let me fix that. You're ruining my street cred. Dude, you're ruining it yourself. You didn't even put up your banner. No. Oh my god. 
Oh, it's because of the saturation. Yeah. I'll tell you, man, next place we go to, mm -hmm. we're gonna have it rigged up. So we don't even need to put up banners. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Lotion and sweat. Ooh. Great. Ew. Keep the sweat? This conversation about height is hilarious. Yeah, it's kind of weird. You know, this mess and nasty ass words. Oh, Cass. <laughs> Cass Nightshade, black lace on sweat was Alice Cooper. Uh -oh. Not poison, homie. Uh oh. <laughs> Got you. Oh. What do I know? <laughs> Lots of weird 80s stuff. I don't know any 80s shit. Yeah, sorry, Nightshade. <laughs> Wrong. Drag Pokemon Trainer Sona. Oh, yeah, Sushi! <laughs> oh, my God! Look, look how perfect he is. <laughs> You're beautiful. I love it. That's so good. Steel type. That's hardcore. Oh. Ugh, oh, I thought you meant the band. Steely Dan. Sorry. Okay, so we're both right. We're both right. You know where Steely Dan got their name from? No. Alright, never mind. Why? It's not appropriate. <gasps> You're gonna have to tell me later. Let's just say that there's a thing named a Steely Dan. Allegedly. Uh, what? Uh, like okay. a female device oh named steely dan really? i don't know if that's the real like the brand i think that's weird <laughs> nightshade i still have to find the xbox for you that's honestly what's holding up your commissions <laughs> yeah it was named after a thing are you looking at wikipedia yeah. After William Burroughs Naked Lunch. I don't know what I don't know who William Burroughs is. I thought of Edgar Rice Burroughs, so I'm way off. Oh he was right. <gasps> Hi Corey. Yeah, well, I mean I have a schedule, so you know I'm always on Thursday at four PM CST. Come on. Come on. We're good, how are you man? Sorry, Nightshade. I grew up with hair metal bands, so, you know. <laughs> when I have the chance to dig back into that knowledge, I will. Usually it's very seldom. It never comes up. <laughs> I think the last time I mentioned it was when we were watching The Office and Dwight was listening to Motley Crue. I was like, okay. Here's this bit of tidbit. And I was like, oh, does that matter? No. Oh, Guava, thank you. This is anime. Pop culture with an anime twist. What? Oh, what? this looks teeny. Guava, have you been to that show? Guava, are you still here? <laughs> All right. I was going to do a little bit more to this, but I don't know. I'll just outline where the grass is. For scale, everyone. For scale. K importante. Just ghost it, man. Just ghost it. Hey, Mighton. He's yeah, he's been here for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Or as Cass would say, me time. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, Cass, are you still here? Okay, so Guava, probably not worth us traveling to, in other words. Where was it? Uh, Seattle? No, Sacramento? Oh. Yeah, no. Yeah. We gotta go to big shows if they're on the coast. Mitan, she says. Mitan. I should have started keeping a list of all the 
mispronunciations that <laughs> Cass had. Because they're adorable! Zines? Zines? Did you give her the bag yet? I think so. I see two two maybe? Cass, no. did we no. No, because I think that's where you you found it. No, I got that it at Asen. Yeah. No, I think I gave her the bag. Did you give her the bag? Cass, did you get the zines bag? The zines bag? Zine. <laughs> zine. Well, foo, that's what my Patreon is for. <laughs> Uh, so if anybody does have a Patreon and has, uh, expensive commissions like I do sometimes, some of my commissions can be expensive, um, Patreon makes it so you technically you can have a payment plan. I know it sounds ridiculous, but in this day and age, is it really that ridiculous? So I do have, under my Vigilant Voucher tier, it's actually for paying for pet commissions over time. But regardless, Foo, what kind of pet you got? I just want to know. It's like you paid Fu to help segue into that. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Also, I don't just throw them in armor. I translate pets' personalities into D&D &D and RPG classes that suit them. So you tell me about them, I do a little paw reading, I call it, and I figure out what class they'd be based on their personality. It's pretty fun. People usually get a kick out of it. I don't know, it's a good time. I do live paw readings at conventions. It's pretty fun. Oh, I just reminded myself of Andy Bernard for a minute. Mm -hmm. I have his mouth sometimes. <laughs> do you notice that? No, you don't. It's the rodent face, man. Sometimes I go in a rodent face. A polished paw reader. I'm a professional. Professional. <laughs> Blue-haired tuxedo cat named Kuro. Oh. He wears a bow tie. Does he wear it all the time? Is he always business? Oh, man. Whoa, you even took a quiz about it? That's official. Holy shit. <laughs> Lychee, are you at least having fun on my commission? I feel like I, I probably gave you a curveball. <laughs> He's fancy 24-7. Well, good. He should be. He was born in a tuxedo. Please. Tuxedo cat isn't business. Business? I don't know what he's doing. Cass, I feel like you were a mom that just made a joke and laughed at it. Like, laughed at your own joke and even clapped. <laughs> Is he always business? <laughs> you like, lose that and everyone's like, Mom, cool it. Oh no. <laughs> Can't bring her anywhere. Dude, if I could, I would, Corey, but honestly, that's another one of my friend's or ex-friend's shticks. She's more of a gypsy. Oh, that's probably for me. I have dropped it tired. It's 2 a.m. Oh, yeah, Nitro. Take a nap, yeah, homie. Sleep. Get some sleep. You had your apple. Now it is time to rest. <laughs> Good work, though. Thanks for staying with us as long as you did. Still. Cass accurate. Cass is dad jokes, but mom jokes. Cass, can you see yourself with the minivan? Is it gonna happen? Just accept it, it's cool. You could rock it, put flames on that shit. I'm mm -hmm. serious. Put a unicorn on it. Put a unicorn on it. Give it like a, do you think anybody has a, what are those called? Hood ornament of a unicorn horn. Mm -hmm. Just do that. Mm -hmm. Put some fur on the top so it's got a mohawk. You're that done. actually probably is not a good idea. Why? Because like you. If it's like if rubber. If you park too close to someone, or you just got too close to well, someone. Well, that's why you make it rubber. That's true. Because then when you're, like, driving down the highway, you can, like... <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> <lingling>. <laughs> Get a dragon and retire to Ireland. Hey, if you can figure out better than we can how to get to Ireland and stay there, let us know. Because we can't even figure that out. Legally speaking. Legally. Sometimes I... I I'll actually... At least every few months, I Google how to legally move to another country from the U.S. Basically. Laichi, if you need more uh, references, if you decide to draw Kukui um, on my Instagram in the highlights, there's a bunch of little videos of him. So if you need him, he's there. He's there for you. He is there for you. Alright. Um, they need a shadow. You guys. 
Don't be like your friend Ashley here. Draw a shadow under people. Ground them! They need to be grounded, homies. Ground them all. What time is it? Seven. I still feel like I'm in a total funk. Like, total funk. Remember I started the stream and I'm like, man, I'm in a funk. And it's not even an art funk. I don't really get into art funks anymore. This is more of a, like, I'm confused all day today funk. It's really weird. Can't explain it. No idea. It wasn't food based. I went to the gym. Still kind of foggy headed. Got enough sleep. I got nothing. I got nothing. Feels like a Friday. It's totally not. Right? I feel like it's been this week, and maybe all the kids starting school are sucking up all the energy everywhere, and I don't know, nothing's left for the rest of us. I don't know. Station wagons! Hell yeah! Can we all agree PT cruisers should be abolished <laughs> off the face of the earth? Can everybody agree on that? Especially the ones with the wood paneling that are trying to be like a station wagon, but they're just, they're not even close. It's like a, it's like a VW bug had sex with a station wagon and had a touch of caviar to it and it lost its shit. Like, I'm over that. That's cool, Ray. Is he excited about it? <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Also, I was thinking about doing this other little series, because I love making series of, uh, I showed you guys this the other day, but these little dragon dudes, I was going to do a whole series of these guys for August, because it's smogist, but now I'm like, uh, but I was going to make a really tiny coloring book call it Diligent Dragons because I'm an alliteration whore. I really am. Like, all my books have alliteration. And um, have them fixing villages and random things that they've destroyed. Accidentally. You know. But I thought it was cute. I might actually do it. I don't know. When I get some time. Or I might make it one of those things where everybody should have one of these, I think, where you have a project that's meant for very specific times and that you just pick away at it whenever you do those things. So, um, example, uh, whenever I'm on a plane or traveling, maybe that's when I start working on this every little bit. Um, that could be fun, you know, because then you have a set time, you're always doing it. If you do it enough, like if you don't travel a lot, maybe not, don't do it. But um, if you're on the bus going to school or something, have one specific series you work on at that time. You know, diligent dragons. Thank you. Oh, that's okay, Guava. Probably not until mid-September then, because next week we're going to stream normally, and then the week after that we're not going to stream. So everybody knows, because that's Dragon Con. And then after that, we'll have the rest of September. And then beginning of October, we're getting to October. Uh, New York is the first week of October, so New York Comic Con will be at that one, and then the rest of October, November, and December were yours! And we're probably going to do holiday streams again this year because they were so much fun last year, so get hyped for that. FlameCon? No. What is FlameCon, Corey? What is that even like? Trying to figure out what they're they're doing with that. I just thought it'd be really cute. 
to be a comic book, or sorry, coloring book. Because coloring books, for those of you who want to make a book, but you don't really want to make a full, like, giant art book yet, a coloring book is a great start because really, like, it's, it's really easy. I'll say. For a first book, it's actually really easy. And it's easy to make if you bind it yourself. Um, it would be easy to order, especially in black and white, if you order it through a company. But I think you could make it just as easy on your own. Um, but it's a wonderful first step for a first book, because there's no story. It's just line art, right? So easy. Just pick, like, a series. Do maybe 20 drawings around it. Um, you don't even have to do that, 10 to 20, something like that, and just do line art on it, and probably make it about double the size you end up seeing the actual finalized book as. Your goal. That's the easiest first book I can recommend. It'd be great for any first-timers. Um, you're going to New York at the end of October. Oh, damn it! That sucks, Corey. We'll see you sometime, I'm sure. I'm sure. Maybe at OhioCon. If we get in, when do we learn when we get in? I don't think they've said. I think they did. I don't think so. No, it was um, ECC. It'll probably be in September when we find out about OhioCon. Um, oh, cute! It's a queer Comic Con. Kind of reputation. Actually, uh, Corey, if you want to even message Tim or Key about that, they might know more. Because um, they're like pretty deep into the, the community with that, so they'd probably really know. I think mean, Key would, but. Key would, yeah, for sure. Um, honestly, I hadn't heard of it though, so it might still be pretty small, but that's great. Um, if you ever get a chance though, Corey, to go to AwesomeCon, they have a Pride Alley in AwesomeCon that's just a bunch of like LGBT artists and stuff. They do. Um, a bunch of books and illustrations based on the community. Oh, well, thank you, Corey. Hi, Doosui. How are you? start something else or should I quit? Oh. I talked about Journey June earlier in the stream. Um, so for those of you who did finish, don't stop. Keep going. Um, I think next week I'll probably dive into this a lot more. The problem was I kind of was ill prepared with this one this time around. So I did the drawing of the snail. So I'll do a recap of what we've done today. Um, did I already tear it out? No. So, here's this. A snail and a fairy dude. I wish I could have done more on his back. I still might. I don't think this is done. But it's far enough along where you can kind of get the gist of it. Um, John Petrucci Psycho Exercises. Okay. Okay. Um, so anyway let the dog out. Yeah, so we did this today. We didn't do much. Honestly, like I said, today was an off day for me. And as a streamer, I feel like if you do stream on your off days, like, you shouldn't stream if you're sick. Don't stream if you're sick, because then you're miserable, your people are going to be miserable. Just call that a day. Be like, I'm off today. But if you're having an off day mentally, and you want to still stream, because sometimes when I'm in a bad mood and I stream, I feel better. I still feel really foggy right now. It wasn't like a bad funk, like I'm mad or anything. It was just fuzzy, really fuzzy. So I didn't want to actually like do anything hardcore on this because I don't want to work on this if my mind's fuzzy. So I was planning to take this and actually uh, line it and watercolor it. But I think I'm gonna save that for next week. We did at least talk about it quite a bit, so that's good. Um, but it will probably be in this style because I totally dig it. However, instead of actually watercoloring in the shadows, I think I'm going to do all the shadows and lighting work digitally on top of watercolor flats. So then I get, I know I can get more of a consistency throughout them because for me being kind of a novice of watercolor, 
I'm scared of not being able to be consistent. So if I take watercolor flats into Photoshop, and let's say I have a layer on top of that that's gonna be the shading, I can set that to a specific you know, percentage that it'll be always consistent throughout the entire book. So to me that sounds more appealing than me trying to match the shading on every like panel, literally. Um, so I'm gonna actually do that. I think that's smart. Um, I might do some sort of like gradients like this, like in the gradations, but for the most part, I think I'm gonna do a lot of the stuff in post. So really all that I'm gonna be doing raw is the pencils and the base flats with watercolor. So for anybody who's trying to figure out their next steps for your journey, June, make sure to at least do a, uh, like a style sheet. Um, for this one, I was supposed to be, like all these white parts were actually supposed to be gold. Which I'm thinking when I do the final piece, like the final book, I might put some gold on the front of the book. I'm kind of into that, but... So all these parts were supposed to be actually gold. Does anybody have any questions on Journey June or conventions or mentorships, anything like that before we go? I like to have a little Q&A buffer before we leave, because sometimes when you leave it's just a little too abrupt. So we will be getting more into this next time. And then um, hopefully on my way to Dragon Con, I can actually start on that little series and have a couple of those for you when I get back so I can do those digitally and show you. Because um, anytime you make a coloring book, you can decide if you want to do the line art digitally or traditionally. And honestly, I really like using Clip Studio for my coloring books because Oh my god, the line art is just juicy. Like, I love it so much. It's so good. Um, the line stabilizer is like crack. But anyway, like if you're a stickler for line art like I am, and you want your lines to always be not shaky or absolutely like consistent, you're gonna want Clip Studio. Um, and especially for a coloring book, I feel like it's very important. I had someone hand me a coloring book once that they made on a copier, which is okay, but his line art was horrible, and I felt really bad about it. <laughs> that was William. Mm. Yeah. That, uh, I mean, it looks better and more professional, the better the line work is. And for those of you who can't get Clip Studio, the way to actually get um, smoother lines if you don't have very smooth line work yourself is to actually do it two to three times bigger than it's supposed to be and shrink it in post. Because then any like shakiness you've got traditionally will kind of work itself out as you reduce it. So, black sad and it made me want to try watercolor again, but maybe just simple things. Gabe knows a lot about black sad, don't you? A uh, little. A little? I mean, I know about it. That's cool though, Ushi. Try some watercolor again. Definitely. It's not really a question, but I'm having a difficult time trying to figure out how to finish up a render journey, June. I was wondering if you guys had any suggestions. So, I'm gonna block this guy. <laughs> I did it at the same time. Yeah, so, Ray, Paint Tool Sci is actually the PC version, like, the non-Mac version of Clip Studio. Because mm -hmm. when I had my Mac, or, yeah, so when I had my PC, I used Paint Tool Sci. Um, and then when I got a Mac, I was panicking because I was like, oh my god, I need something that's got a stabilizer. So when I got my Mac, apparently that was Clip Studio is the equivalent because they both have the stabilizer that you can adjust to make your lines smoother. I think Paint Tool Side is just free. It is. Yeah, yeah well, it was when I got it. Yeah. Um, but if you have a, you know, a PC and not a Mac, Try Paint Tool Sci. If you have a Mac, get Clip Studio. Also, if you plan on doing a lot of books and stuff in your future and a lot of prints and stuff, you might want to consider a Mac. Just saying. I don't want to start that up, but I'm just saying Macs are better for image works. Um, so, Eliza, when figuring out your Journey June style, this is a little big for what I'm going to suggest you do, but 
I would take uh, maybe a five by seven, so this about this size. You know, make a couple scenes on it. I guess this is about five by seven. Yes, it is. Well, do a four by six, something like that. Whatever the ratio of what your final piece will be, because what you want to do before you actually get to this point even is to figure out what you want your book to look like. So I've decided that Hazel's story is most likely going to be... Let me get out a piece of scratch paper. I don't have any scratch paper. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Do you have any scratch paper? All my paper's too nice. Okay, scratch paper. So, what I would do is... Like, actually, this is one of the funnest parts, too. Plan out your book. So I've decided my book is going to be basically about a square, right? Not so small, probably about this big, right? It's going to be perfect bound, if I can help it. And then on the inside, <coughs> it's going to have the 4x4 four four panels. Because I decided I'm not the kind of artist that likes really dynamic, crazy panel work. I'm really not. Like, maybe I'll do it once in a while, but really I'm pretty regimented. I like the story to kind of speak for itself and to not have anything take away from it. So now that I know this, take one of those panels, figure out how big it would kind of be. If you want your book to be, how big was I thinking? <coughs> Sorry, I got stuff in my throat. So my book might be maybe nine by nine, something like that, or nine by 10, actually. I think nine by 10 would be good. Um, because you have to kind of take into account the binding. So a little bit bigger, about an inch bigger than my pet and armor book. Also, if you don't have any idea what you like, either go to your own uh, bookcase or go to a library and look at all the different types of books there are. Kids illustration books, um, kids graphic novel books, regular graphic novels, anything you can and find a good book that's representational of what you want to do and use that almost as a template because that's going to help take away a lot of the scariness a lot of the unknowns stuff like that and you know you can have multiple uh templates too so maybe maybe you get a book that is the size you want right but then you find another book that has the panels you like or pages laid out the way you like them, something like that. So as long as you have a couple references of what you like, that's gonna help a lot. So once you've figured that out, figure out how big these are. And then you're gonna wanna do them about two to three times their size, okay? And that's up to you, how much detail and work you wanna put in, totally up to you, totally up to the style. If you have a very simple style, you probably don't need to go this big. This is probably more for people that want more detail ability and stuff like that. Otherwise, you know, it's completely up to you. Uh, and sometimes this much freedom is a little bit deterring or it scares some people, but don't think of it that way. Try not to think of it that way. And once you figure out, you know, what size you're gonna do it at, do a bunch of those, okay? And then that's gonna be the size that like, I make every one of my panels and then I, draw it, redraw it, whatever, and then I figure out on that, so let's say it was three times that size, let's say this was actually two by two per panel, okay? For me, then this would be three times that, so they're going to be six by six, right? Two by two, three times that, six by six. So all my squares for my panels are going to be six by six, and now that I know that, I'm going to make a couple of them, okay? Like print out, uh, print out maybe one of your thumbnails, six by six on one of these a couple times, you know? And then try different styles on it if you want to do it traditionally. If you want to do it digitally, you don't even need to print it out. You can just do it digitally on your computer, figure out a style you like, and then once you've done that, try to make it into a formula in your head. So be like, okay, so I've got base colors, flats, right? And then on top of that, I'm going to have like some gradients, and then on top of that I'm going to have a highlight that's always set to like 20%. Figure out how you can make it a formula so it's consistent throughout the entire book. That's going to make it be a lot more cohesive, right? So that, you know, as the book progresses there's not a lot of inconsistencies, right? So hopefully that helps. Um, is that what you meant? 
Hopefully that helps. Let me know if any of that's confusing, Eliza. Yeah, so Clip Studio is a one-time purchase unless you get it on your iPad. On your iPad, Clip Studio is actually a subscription. Um, so it, it differs depending on where you've got it. Because I've got it on my iPad as well, and it is a subscription. Subscription. Good, Eliza, good. So I would say if you're totally confused and you want to get started on it, because your story was great, I want to see it as a book, um, maybe start by going to a library or something. Unless, of course, you already know kind of what you want the book to look like, figure out what the book looks like so you have an end goal in mind, because that's really important. If you don't have an end goal in mind, you don't know how to get anywhere, right? If you just start walking, you don't know where you're going. You need a destination point. So figure out the end game for the book, and work backwards, and figure out what the style is by just taking one little, like, you know, frame, and doing that a couple different ways. Figure out what you like the best. Maybe one you use sat high saturated colors and heavy lines. Maybe another one you use pastels and maybe a purple line or something like that. And maybe there's one that's a painterly version, you know? And then in your head, weigh the pros and cons of each one. Obviously the first two are gonna be quicker because they're just flats and line work. Third one's gonna be a lot more intensive time-wise, but maybe the look of the painterly style matches your story way better than the other two and it's worth it. So you kinda gotta weigh the pros and cons of what's gonna work for you. Yeah, there are a lot of possibilities. Maybe just start with like four and tell yourself, okay, do four completely different styles that all kind of speak to you about your story. And from there, what you're doing is concept art. That's basically concept art. So you look at those four after you're done, be like, hmm, this one works for this reason, this one doesn't. You might have to even take one of them and do another four off of that one to further you know, whittle it down to make sure you can get that formula. The formula is important. I know a lot of people probably don't even think about this or talk about this, but it's basically what a style guide is, and that's what you gotta do. Because usually colorists and people that are working on color in comic books and stuff, they have their own way of doing it, and they get hired on for doing it their way, but they do have a formula in their head for what they do. Like, Gabe, mm -hmm. you have a formula, right? Yep. There you go. I have a formula for certain things I color. I'll color things in mobile games different than I'll color things with watercolor. Stuff like that. So everything, I mean, it's like it's like going to the beach and wearing winter clothes. Like, that's not, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, so. you gotta match your book and your style to that story. So, no more pastels. Yeah, Eliza, I forbid it. No more pastels. So anyway, hopefully that helps. If you need more assistance with that, feel free to like email me because I really want to see any of your guys' books. I'd rather have you asking me a million questions about how to do it than to not do it at all, okay? Gabe's the same way. We will take time out of our day to help you, okay? I promise you that. Um, so anyway, we're going to be on Monday, okay? So we don't stream on the weekend anymore because it's summer. You know things die down in the summer so Gabe will be on his channel which is under his name in the upper right he'll be on Monday um, at 9 p.m. Central so two hours from now but on Monday um, and then I'll be on Tuesday he'll be on Wednesday me Thursday so thank you guys for coming we had a lot of fun today we got some stuff done I did Eliza's ferry finally um, but yeah, Gabe, do you have anything to say? Mm -hmm. No? All right, guys. Have a great weekend. All right, if you have any questions, email me, and we'll see you Monday, all right? We love you. Bye-bye.